da cha 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 da cha cha Oh, hi. Didn't see you there, chat. How's it going there? Ooh, I gotta get my tweet. I didn't get my tweet done. What's wrong with you? I just, I mean, fucking dude. I mean, you want the litany? You want, you want the litany? You want the list? Yeah. Oh, it's start, oh. start spitting it. You just made the last. Well, it all started. It all started in the year 1987, when the internet was but a glimpse in the eye of tech giants. One, two, it skip a few. A it, it was, it was but a singular tube and not a series. One, two, skip a few, and Harambe was shot. Um, alrighty, so D and D. The unexpectables. Don't forget the uh, the meme gif. What meme gif? Exactly. Any any meme gif. I don't do that because if you put a meme gif on there, people can't just click the bot click the button. Also, can someone please tell me why Chain Chomp is in Mario Tennis Aces? Well, can someone, someone tell me why Blooper's in it? T tr trick question. Let me answer it for you because it's fucking awesome. I'm gonna main him. Sorry, Goomba. He has no thumbs. You have Mario Party. Shut the fuck up. You've had Mario Party. You um, shut up. Can we can we can we talk about Rage 2? It looks fun. Is anyone else? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, it fucking looks fun as shit. I'm gonna buy it, man. I fuck it, dude. I like the first Rage. It, it, it looks like okay. I'm gonna be real with you. Yeah. It kind of like looks like it, it looks like Half Life 2 Deathmatch, but with wackier weapons. Yeah. Okay. So that sounds fun. What the shit? <laughs> you guys, no, 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 no. You just pitched me something fun. <laughs> I'm not I'm not super yeah. like interested in it, but like it's like if you if you put it in front of me, I wouldn't resist, but I'm not gonna buy it. Taka, yeah. Taka, I have an important question for you. Yeah. Does it have nuclear launch codes? Because if not, it's inferior to Fallout 76. It, it is true. And someone pointed out, oh my god, you can grief each other? Who would why would you why would you put in nuclear launch codes and you can grief each other? Ah, oh, I can't wait to grief people with nuclear Talk launches. Because it glows in the fucking dark. It glows in the fucking dark. I just <laughs> went fuck. I just went fuck. I mean, fucking so, like, that, that's where, my answer where were you when Todd like, Coward became God Howard? Where were you yo, when listen, that happened, listen, everybody? When, when Todd showed up, it's like we're gonna have dedicated servers. Todd, how the fuck are we gonna have dedicated servers? How are we gonna do this? I was in the chess club. Checkmate, motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, uh, 3 thank you for gifting that sub to Chehlem. Uh, dicks on my day, on, dicks on Sadme. Thank you so much for the 4 month resub. Boom! Uh, Boom! <laughs> God damn, Bobby. <laughs> Boom! Uh, Dyed! Dyed! Snake, that's the one that scares me the most. <laughs> oh, whoa! Whoa, Harry, thank you for the 500 bits! Scythe! Drago! 50,000 bits! Woo! <laughs> right now it's a three way tie. Woo! Woo! Yeah, speaking of nuclear launch codes. Oh! <laughs> Bit bomb! Nuclear launch detected. Fuck, where is it? Where is it? Remember that thing when that bomb comes in? We gotta find Scythe Drago. He's somewhere in our base and he's. Oh god, he's targeted our fucking. our. 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 our, our refineries. <laughs> Fuck! We can't target. Ah, uh, got you with my sights. Scythe Drago, thank you so much for the fifty thousand bits, dude. That is insanely kind. Oh my god. Ha ha ha. So 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 so, so talk, We were talking about Todd Howard memes. The only fucking other meme that I was really hoping for is when Reggie said, "I can't wait to get off the battle bus." I wanted him to dab so hard. <laughs> the dabble bus, you mean? I wanted, I wanted him to dab, do the dance emote, and then go back to the presentation per the per that, that It would have destroyed the internet. It would, I, it, I, that's exactly why I wanted that to happen, though. If he actually we landed, have... if he landed on a parachute and said, this is where we're dropping, folks, we would have all fucking shattered Rick, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone, okay, it, I, I, that would be pre-ordered on everyone's Switch right this second. It's, okay, now, again, real fast, I do want to go over some of these bits, because some amazing bit drops have been happening here. Scythe Drago, 50,000 bits. I don't know what to say, dude. Thank you so much for your support for the Unexpectables. And that is insanely kind and generous of you. Thank you so much from the bottom of all of our hearts. Uh, Aos, thank you so much for the 1,333 bits. Can't wait to listen to this episode podcast as I drive up to California this weekend to perform a jailbreak. Swim from Alcatraz to support my student efforts on donating to food charity. Thank you. That that threw me off for a loop there. Oh. Scythe Drago with the 10,000 bits. I want to be first. Oh, fuck. <laughs> He's, oh my god, the breakneck speed! He takes the number one spot! Scythe Drago! With the 10,000 10, additional bits. That is insane, Scythe Drago. Oh my god. Thank you Lewis so- the heel. He's back up top. Thank you so much for the support, dude. Jeez, Louise. 321 Ajima, thank you so much for the 100 bits. 
Uh, Aos, thank you so much for the 1,333 bits. Oh, sorry, I said thank you for that one. Winter Drake 107, thank you so much for the 3,000 bits. First time I've been here live in a long time. Here's some cash. Thank you so much, Winter Drake, for the 3,000 bits. Yo, the Penguin, thank you for the eight month resub. No, nobody, actually, for the 600 bits. Seems good, seems good, feels good. Thank you so much. Griffin247, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Take my bits for making Wednesday my favorite day of the week. Thank you, Griffin247, for the 1,000 bits. T Loss, thank you for the sub. Jonesy79, thank you for the sub. Oh my god. Nova Jen, thank you for the eight month resub. Philip Chandler, thank you for the 100 bits. Scythe Drago, again with 10,000 bits. I want to be first! Uh -oh. I just imagined you doing. What's wrong? Uh oh. What's, what's happening? My. Uh, huh. Oh, my audio. Oh, that was weird. What's this blue? What is this blue? What's going on? Hello? Uh, oh, hello. Hello? Oh, it's just, it must be just a visual glitch. Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, oh. yeah, yes, yeah. We can hear you. Nothing, nothing oh, okay. Huh, oh, weird. Okay. okay. Oh, I, I'm oh. sorry. I Tech stuff. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Austin, I'm sorry. If yeah. Anything's happening. Mm. Uh, Sting Chahalan. Leon, thank you for the 500 bits. Uh, th sorry, I gotta, I gotta speed run through these because we gotta start here really soon. Rap uh, Bell. Rap God. Go. Cheers. Yo, 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 yo. Sting Chameleon, thank you for the 500 bits. Bud the Spud, thank you for the five month resub. That ginger can thank you for the two month resub. Panda Assassin with 10,500 bits. Birthday, birthday, birthday. How do you do? Birthday, birthday. How do you boop? Thank you so much for the 10,500 bits. Already a supremely kind amount of bits. Soul Flame, thank you for the 100 bits. Stuggy Bum, thank you for the 500 bits. Not Dante42, thank you for the sub. Hero Shepard, thank you for the 100 bits. Sage the Omni Geek, thank you for the 1,525 bits. Happy belated birthday to Ed, the Monty Glue and the Unexpectables. Thank you so much. Abridged Pie Man 21, thank you for the 1,100 bits. Monty, feel better. Kudakage, thank you for the tier one sub. Zeno, Zene, Zeno, Zeno Nade, thank you for the 500 bits. 321 Gmo, thank you for the 500 bits. Monty getting blue. Uh, she's got blue, yeah. Dragon Man 999, thank you for the 1,021 1, bits. Thank you so much for being one of the top five people to inspire me to start twitching YouTube. Love ya. Love, Dragon Man 999. Thank you so much. Jonah, thank you for the 1500 bits. Frankers, 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 Frankers. I don't know what that is. I don't. <laughs> Pickle Dun. Pickled Dun. Pickled Undead. Oh my god. Thank you for the two month resub. Uh, Proto Saber 363. Thank you for the 2750 bits. Just got off work after starting at 7. Ha EST. Half bits! Bah! Thank you so much, Proto Saber. Oh. Sword Cooper, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. And who? Ah, for the 200 bits. Uh, <laughs> what? That's, In the Discord. That's, that's, that's uh, Was that Hua? Uh, who, do, who donated the bits? I'm sorry, I'm not on. Hua! Uh, it's Hua. Uh. It's Hua! Uh. It's Hua! Uh. I'm, I'm assuming he's doing the Roman Reigns thing, but I'm, this is also how much I like wrestling. <laughs> Oz195, thank you for the 13 month resub. It's tea time. Sit signified at the table in my winter's best. Woo! Holy shit. Um, again, Panda Assassin and Scythe Drago and Probate. Thank you so much. PK Salt, Marie Guillotine, Destiny Marie, Black Lake Sanji, Ifona Uwu, Winter Drake. My god, you guys. That is incredibly nice. Sage Omni King, uh, Abridged Pie Man. Uh, just, whoo. Thornton 2017. Just they, uh, Griffin two four seven, Winter Drake, Aeos, just and Argent Lyle thirteen with fifteen hundred bits. Hey, Unexpectables, Monty, did the TFS guys get you your belated birthday gift yet? What? 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 I don't know anything about this. We have something at the office that we have to give to you or ship over to you guys at some uh -oh. point. Uh oh. People are sending stuff. People are people are sending stuff to the TFS office for you now. Oh no. Yeah. I'm sorry. That, yeah, we're just like you kind of like. That's great that you want to do that, but now it's gonna not, be a pain in the ass to try and not, get it to you guys. Yeah, not the place to do it. Sadly, we just I have a small place that I live in. I can't really accept too much stuff. Igor, sadly. Igora eight two nine. Thank you for the sub. This is good. All right. Yeah. Uh, real fast. I'm gonna go grab my drink of water, and we can get and and then we can get started when I sit down. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have one minute, go. <laughs> Sorry about that, Zito. I, hopefully that doesn't become a... Well, we'll, we'll try to figure it out, but it's just like, yeah, we, we've had people who want to send stuff to you guys for the Unexpectables. It's just like they sent it to us, and we're just like, yeah, but if you're sending it to Monty, she's not at TFS. Yeah, you got to send it by Polar Bear for me. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Zephyrus101, 3,000 bits. I stayed up till 5 in the morning for this stream. 
on my oh day my off. God. I regret nothing. Holy shit, Zephyrus. <laughs> we'll try and keep you up with our with with our acting. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 No ASMR. Bull. Bull. Anything. No, All right. Thank no you so ASMR. much for the three. Okay. Are we ready for? Are we? We're we're now ready for Funky Kong ASMR as he drives you from the airport. Hey, dude. No. 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 How was your weekend? No. Bodacious. No. <laughs> Gra. Gru ha. No. Ha. Wow. <laughs> when, when, when is when is when is Lanky Kong coming out? Like no. when, when, when we get Lanky, Lanky Kong is dead. Lanky Kong, Kong is dead canonically. Wait, Lanky how did who the fuck killed Lanky Kong? Uh, we don't know. He's in. He was in. He was in the racing game. But anyway, Lanky Kong ASMR. Woo. <laughs> Is it wrong that sometimes I drive my car and I'm afraid all of a sudden he's in the back seat, but like in the opposite seat in the back seat? So like, as you put his long arm curls around the side seat and just grabs me by my throat, like this, you slowly see the arm creeping closer in one single frame. You just that just described an up. You just described. You have just described an upcoming indie game where it's you driving alone on a freeway while people are chasing you. Yeah, it's a horror yeah. game. Oh what? my god! It's called okay. Beware. Okay, stop, oh, stop, so stop. Good. I'm playing it and I am listening to exclusively the initial D soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real fast. Uh, one more, one more bit. Call up real fast. We'll get right back to it. Um, Briz on the ice. Thank you for the hundred bits. Three two hundred G. Thank you for the hundred bits. SF Cody. Thank you for the one thousand bits. Did Monty uh, do her y'all yet? One hundred, one thousand bits. We'll see. Thank you so much for the bits, dude. Rosso was six. Thank you for the two hundred bits. And Grim Gore. Well, get, oh, sorry, we can't get your question right now, Rosso. Grim Gore, the Soviet Orc. One thousand bits. Hello, comrade. Take this for the years of laughter. And Zephyrus. One hundred one. Thank you for the one thousand bits. Your guys acting put me to sleep. Ah. Oh. Thank you so much. I, don't, I think that's a compliment. All right, Monty, take us away to a magical kingdom where we can't escape and where we're not ourselves anymore. It sounds better. Okay, we'll do introductions for streams and stuff at the end because we didn't get a chance to do that. So just don't forget. Okay, okay. our names Alrighty. on Twitter. No joke. <laughs> there's also like a command. There's like at- A couple of H's cast. are in there somewhere. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, H's. There's some E's. There's no E's. I don't know what's happening with the E's anymore. What's the H situation? Gone. Wow. <laughs> Bermuda Triangle it disappeared. It's gone forever. Jesus. Alrighty. Goomba, are you okay? You sound really upset about that. <laughs> no, no, no. You should be upset because it's Pigeon Appreciation Day. Oh, it yeah, is. it is. Oh. Shame we don't have a pigeon to appreciate it. Fuck. It's fucking, fucking <laughs> fuck. Sorry, oh. I actually got distracted by that game and I'm like, shit, I'm never playing this. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Oh. When last we left oh. our heroes, Greckles the Kenku Rogue, Panic the Tiefling Bard, Forky the Orc Barbarian, and Task the Kobold Ranger, the party encountered the wild and wacky weather of Alabas in the form of a literal blanket of snow, and after doing so, hired some new employees. They hired Alice, a human server, Euro Magister, the lizard folk sorcerer, and Skinny, the tabaxi maid. After a warm bath and a lead from Hasrad, the party found Solly being escorted by Brook to the city. And Greckles, being the stealthy bird he is, managed to sneak his way in and greet her. After a tense meeting between Bork and an apology from Task, Solly managed to convince the party and Bork to go out for tea. And now, trudging through snow, the party makes way. Okay, real, real fast. Oh, oh okay. Connor is in with us now. Okay. <laughs> I, I saw Rule 20 wasn't in there. I'm just like, is, is he okay? Are you on it? You okay, man? I'm here. Hi, wow. He's here. Uh, so as you guys kind of exit the glass shop, um, the guards kind of kind of come around uh, Brork and they're kind of in hushed tones, so to speak, to him. And like, Brork's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's great. Uh, and he looks over and he points to Panic, uh, Panic, Borky, and, and Greckles and kind of gestures them forward. Uh, two guards approach the three of you. Does Borky, the, Borky kind of points at Greckles? Like, just like, him? Him? Do you want him? Greckles crosses his arms and just glares back at Borky. Uh, the guard comes up and salutes with an arm and goes, Captain Bork would like to speak with you. Uh, well, we got nothing to hide. About, yeah, about what? He just gestures towards Bork, who's currently standing crossed arms with Task, kind of. Uh, How Task, I'm assuming you're following. Oh yeah, I'm following, but uh, Task isn't paying Brook any mind. What? what, what uh, can I roll a perception check to see what Brook's face looks like? Like, does it like like? I, roll an insight. Uh, roll an insight. Ooh, ooh, yes. Man, one of my best rolls. Read the tension. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. 
he's neutral as you can tell i mean okay 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 your 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 understanding of orc facial expression i mean oh so bottom jaw only got it <laughs> <laughs> um you you guys are kind of brought forward by a guard you have no idea what race the guard is uh and Burke just kind of looks to you guys and goes Solly would like to go out for tea. That sounds like a wonderful time. You mean this? Forky tea poses like this? We could do that it right is here. the letter T, yes. Mm, okay. And Solly kind of laughs a little bit. Borky just whispers to himself, I know a letter. That's T. Good That's, job. Thank you. No. Ease up on the guard, and Brooke kind of like does a gesture with his hand, and many of the guards kind of disperse, but a few do stay around. Uh, and he kind of adjusts his sword as I goes, uh, Follow me if you would, and do keep your hands to yourself if you can. And he steps forward um, through the snow, the boots kind of crunching the fresh white snow beneath. A donkey cart passes by as you guys begin to make your way. Uh, what well, looks like towards one of the middle districts, essentially. Uh, and then the awkward silence follows as Brooke doesn't say anything and Sully doesn't... She seems like she wants to try and say something, but she doesn't really know what to I say. I will break the ice! So, tell us uh, how... The last we saw you was actually at the opera when the whole thing went... Ha uh, when all that nonsense went down. How did you fare afterwards? Oh, that. Yeah. Uh, well, I got my weapon back from you. Um, more or less, lots of paperwork, uh, lots of searching. Mm. We've come to understand that we could use perhaps an aerial defense to the city now, what with dragons to the north. Well, um, you won't have to worry about those pirates anymore. They've been taken care of by a storm giant. That's what a report told us. We took statements from many of the actors as well as from you as well. Mm. Good work, at the very least, I can say. Um, keeping people safe, more or less. And he kind of like does a side glance and like Sully gives him two thumbs up, like, yeah, you're doing good. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're learning to be a chum. Can I can I insight their interaction? Sure. And just see if there's anything going anything interesting going on between them. Oh, pff, that's 11. eleven. Okay. Uh, Damn it. <laughs> I mean, they're probably friends. Like, I mean, considering how much time she, that's happened, that's passed, mm -hmm. um, you don't think there's any like Sully doesn't appear to hate him by any means. Well, no, it's You're it's just the whole the whole comment about going to the dance just seemed so high school romance. <laughs> no, it's gives it. It's like it's like an appreciative, like yeah, yeah, you're doing good, and like Brooke even like kind of rolls his eyes and keeps stepping forward. Uh, more or less, we're just trying to increase our defenses, get allies where we can. And you watch as Burke kind of like peers into a couple alleyways. We'll talk about this in private, I think would be best. Very well. Uh, he guides you guys through the gate. Um, he stops at the, the kiosk and, and talks to the guard there. And then he gestures you guys to go in. He gives you guys passage. Uh, eventually, uh, you make your way to what appears to be the middle, um, crafting district which is not quite what you expected it is very very large buildings with very tiny buildings built in it's like giant almost warehouse sized structures so with... they look this is our first time here correct yeah um lots of dwarves there are so many dwarves Whoa. um humans you honestly only see humans and dwarves you don't really see anything else um, and you see now in these giant, giant buildings, they're making trebuchets. <gasps> they're making ballistas. Mm. Borky's, Borky, uh, Borky's going up to the windows like a little kid at Christmas. Oh, oh. No, no, no. Bork grabs you by like the <clears throat> back of your, your outfit and like kind of directs you back. Don't, you don't have clearance. Just please. Well, I want to look at him. Borky just behaves. It's a, superior, it's a superior weapon of destruction as he's being dragged away. <laughs> <laughs> all, all right, well then, Brork, so we don't have to worry about us having to not touch anything while we're still low rank. How does one actually get entrance to the uh, to the middle district? Work through a guild, which you've done, but you do kind of like stops talking. But given the written statement of your criminal record, which I've heard has been abolished. 
Indeed. That has put a damper on that. So if you keep up the good work, eventually I'm sure you will make your way in here. Not to say there's too much for you to make use of, but there are a few shops here and there that I'm sure you could find purchase at for weapons and do you think similar any, things. Do you think anyone makes hats? Like nice hats? I'm, I'm sure there's a there's a uh, hattery somewhere here. A hattery um, is that what it's called officially? It is uh, actually. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what, well, about the, well, this, what about this? What about cheesery? Okay. <laughs> well, while while this chattering is going on, Greckles is going to try to like inch in beside Sully just to try to have a regular conversation for once. Hey, how are you doing? <sighs> a lot better now. How have things been? I've, yeah. I've I've been absolutely amazed at your stained glass work. So Brooke stops and like, who's directly behind Brooke? Uh, I guess me. Yeah, <laughs> roll a roll a dexterity saving throw because he just stopped in his tracks. <laughs> All right, dexterity. Sorry, my thing froze a little bit. Here we are. Dexterity save. You said. Yeah. Here I go. <laughs> nice. Not Natural twenty. 20. 20. <laughs> He stops and you just like do like a side, you like like figure skater around him and just keep walking. I just nothing personal kid right behind him. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> he turns his head to Sully and goes, you sent him stained glass? And she goes, uh, Hammernar actually did it for, for me. Yeah. And Brooke just like rubs his temples and goes, I have to talk to him too. Oh, is that such a problem, Brooke? It is because we don't want. Mm, let's no, get to you don't, we... wa don't want what? You don't want what? Okay, okay. Shh. My goodness, you guys are loud. Sorry, right now I, isn't it's, it's been said before. Yeah, we are quite loud. Bro mm. <laughs> Look, Solly is in protective custody right now, and we don't want anyone thinking that she's communicating with anyone who might have ill intention towards us. She doesn't. I 100% believe she doesn't, but there are people in the council who think that she might. So, if Ooh, she's speaking, exactly. you don't want to know. I think I do. I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know as well, so I know for later. I don't even think we know everybody in the council. There's a lot of people in the council. I doubt you would know everyone, even if I told you the people who I know. There are people even I don't know. It's a large group in the hundreds. Yikes. Yeah, yikes indeed. And there are a few people in particular who do not like me. The store's around this corner. Come on, Solly. And like Solly kind of walks in front of me. You guys go down this sort of narrow passageway with a few steps. Uh, it looks like someone's shoveled them off. Eventually you reach uh, it looks like a tiny, tiny little storefront, little hole in the wall place um, that has like a little tiny itty bitty hanging side that looks like a, a symbol of Abin. It's got like kind of a mountain to it. And instead of like a sword, it's got a cup, like a saucer on top of the mountain. Um, and What's Rourke up walks up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rourke walks over and he, he opens the door and you hear a little ding, 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 ding of uh, chimes as he, he politely gestures in and, and Sully enters and kind of like brushes off the snow off her shoulders. Silly question, is, is is the door, does Borky have to walk sideways through the door? No, you can walk in straight, but it is a little short, uh, okay. but it is wide enough for you to fit in. Okay, so Borky ducks his head and walks in. Yeah, what do we, Burke what, does what, the same what, too. What are we smelling right now? What are we? Tea, you smell all kinds of different teas. Mm. You smell the scent of, of ground coffee. You smell herbal, herbal mixtures, things like that. Um, almost a soapy sort of odor, but also really, really warm. And the moment you step in, immediately that that harsh chill, the cold bones you have just melt. Mm. Um, it is nice and cozy. It's very small. There's there's uh, there's kind of like a bar seat set up, kind of like a countertop, uh, with with plenty of seats there for all of you. Uh, there's also two tables in in this tiny little little shop. Uh, vacant. Uh, looks like they could fit maybe uh, four people each. Um, and and Bork walks in. Sully immediately runs over to the the countertop and and finds a seat. And she holds the door open for all of you to enter. Um, uh, and as you enter, Greckles, he gives you like this stare. <laughs> this like narrow-eyed dad stare. That's an at one. 
Boy, he looks friendly today. <laughs> yeah, he looks really super friendly today. I just imagine you just like, da la 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 la, with a happy it's smile a, on no, your it, face. It's, it's a photorealistic bird look at Brock. <laughs> 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 Can someone make that, please? Brock giving, giving Greg the stink eye just a realistic bird oh. face back. <laughs> Uh, Sally kind of waves to the counter and goes, Greg will sit next to me. All right, all right, hold on. Uh, immediately you hear kind of like a clang, 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 a clanging of noises in the back as the door is kind of closed. And you see a man step out from the back. He He's a human, probably in his like early 60s, late 50s. Um, he's kind of like like gray hair kind of tossed to one side. He's kind of got like a, a, a goatee sort of set going on from his bottom chin going all the way up just beneath his eye is this giant scar like this massive scar oh, which along um, which along which like from which side of his face uh looking at him if you were to look at him it would be on the right side of his face um and he kind of stumbles he goes oh hey son how's it going and brooke just kind of <clears throat> um charlie nice to see you he goes oh come on he like walks over and he like rustles brooke's hair and Brooke's like fixing it immediately. Like, don't do that. Don't. My hair. Is it dad? Yes. Mm, hi. How are you? It's like you're back so soon. What are you doing back so soon? Hello, Sully. And Sully's like, hi, Charlie. Okay. What are you doing here? Uh, uh, oh, you've made friends. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Charlie. Charlie Warden. Uh, hi, there. Hi. Good to meet you, sir. Borky the Orc. Full blooded Orc. Ha. <laughs> Brooke, you're finally getting to know your own people again. I'm proud of you. And shakes his shakes your hand, Borky, like and you that. see just Bork kind of like get a little uncomfortable in his skin, like mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Charlie, Dad, he gets corrected. Can we just do? I'm, I'm working. Is this your dad? The Borky no, gestures. No, it's like he. I'm basically his father. Yeah, I'm basically his father. Are you taking yeah, applications? Basically. What for fathership? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got some openings. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm retired. Uh, dad. Retired dad. Excellent. All dads are tired. <laughs> uh, Burr kind of says, can we get the, the privacy special? And he goes, oh, yeah, okay, sure. And he gets up and he walks over to the door. He locks it and he flips the sign to close. He goes, you, you know how much privacy that... Do you think the privacy special would have a more uh, obscure name than that? Well, the only one who's allowed the privacy special is him. And he, the, the dad jumps a thumb at, at Brark. He goes, thank you, dad, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Thanks. And he sits down at the countertop alongside you guys. I was... <laughs> Frother. <laughs> uh, so, what, what is the name of this coffee shop, by the way? Did we, uh, see, did we see it walking in? Because, like, it I, was, oh, I wouldn't, it was called... I, would, I wouldn't know, but, like... You can't read. Uh, for the rest of you who can read... Uh, it's called Avon's Cup. It's really a, not a very creative name, but okay. it's, it's a quaint, it's, it's, it's a cute little place. Yeah. Uh, as you look inside, there's, there's all kinds of decorations inside. There's like kind of gaudy paintings. Uh, the one thing that kind of stands out is that there is a large ornate sword that is currently like resting on what looks like a post in the middle of this sort of little restaurant. It, it's, it's obviously been built around this strange building. Um, and it's a very, very nice sword, uh, just hanging there. Um, Can we do any sort of intelligence check to determine anything about it? Roll a perception check if you'd like. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, it's 15. 15, okay. Uh, you're able to tell that it is not just like a regular weapon, it's actually a silvered weapon. Um, it's very beautiful, very ornate. Uh, and above it, there is a plaque saying uh, to Captain uh, Charlie Warden, uh, for many years of service, enjoy your retirement, is what it says. Hmm. Charlie. All right. Yeah. You were a, you were a captain. Yeah, I was a captain of Tracadia Capital. Uh, and Panic, you know that is the largest city in Tracadia. Uh, what part of Tracadia? Uh, it is mostly in southern Tracadia. It's kind of like weirdly in the middle. There's a giant mountain range that cuts through Tracadia. It is right near the edge of the mountain ranges uh, to the south. It is huge. It Would is you say it's like the Calgary of cities? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's fantasy Calgary. <laughs> what? Panic, Panic sort of does that that cat eye thing whenever they see something scary where their eyes widen, <laughs> but what their expression doesn't change. <laughs> what brought you all the way to Alavast? 
oh, him. He points to Rourke, and Rourke is like, no, you didn't. You came here to... He, he came here to establish the guard in Alabas to start, and then I took up the mantle when he retired. I was your trainee in uh, Tracadia Capital. And um, Charlie kind of scribes the back and is like, oh, it's going all right. Having to deal with vampires, apparently. That's not fun. Oh, that's but... scary. Hmm. How that's, many? It's a coven, I've heard, but I don't know details. I'm is retired. Like, I'm not is, supposed is to. Is that like 12? Uh, can I, uh, can I do, like, a, a history check to see if that's common in Tricadia? Yeah, absolutely. Vampires, right. rain, uh, taxes, it's all pretty common there. History? History, yeah. Okay. Okay. 18. I mean, like, random narrativism more or less happens a lot. It kind of comes in phases. Um, Tricadia being such a huge trade port means it attracts a lot of attention from various different things. Vampires make sense because of the mountain ranges. There's lots of cave systems uh, that they can totally take advantage of. Um, so it, it, it's not something that happens a lot, but it doesn't surprise you yeah. that there are vampires there. Yeah. Well, mountainous region like that probably probably is not all that uncommon. Hmm. Solly nods and like kind of sits and goes, um, oh, can we order some drinks? Charlie's like, yeah, of course you can order some drinks. Or do uh, I even need to give you a menu, Solly? And she goes, no, I'll take the special. Real, all right. real quick, so the sitting arrangement, I'd like to just go over this real fast. Now, you said the table sits four, and there's six of us. No, 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 the, 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 you guys are at the counter, which can fit more people. Oh, um, OK. Yeah. It can actually fit perfectly six people, so you guys are all sitting, <clears throat> taking up the entirety of this countertop. You know what? I'll go ahead and have a special, too. All right. So you want me to make it in front of you? She goes, yes, please. She's got this big smile on her face. Um, Mr. Mr. Dad, what's your uh, strongest drink? I'm afraid I don't serve alcohol here. No, I did not Just say tea. alcohol. What is your strongest tea? Okay, hot pepper tea it is. I'll get that there for you. And he's like kind of writes it I'd down. i make a it a double. Budget. You'll regret uh, it, but sure thing. I know nothing of teas, so surprise me so long as it's warm. You want something warm? Do you want the special too? Very well. Oh, uh, wait, the, the special does contain milk. Is, is that okay? Oh, that's, that's, oh, that's mm, fine. Mm, mm. Greg, <laughs> Greg just kind of squats down looking left to right rapidly. Uh, can you make mine without milk? I, uh, hmm. I'll make something up for you. Fair enough. Solly kind of turns and goes, I didn't, I didn't know you can't have milk. Yeah, it, uh, milk, cheese, it all just kind of messes with me. Fair enough. So, how have you been? What's your studies been like? Uh, studies. Uh, well, I mean, everything's kind of been a weird blur, more or less. I know how that goes. Uh, Kurt, we're picking you up on mic, by the way. What? Yeah. Yeah. Someone's shuffling around. I'm. So, oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, okay, I'll try and sit still. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> um, she kind of, she kind of like fidgets with a napkin on the on the countertop. She goes, "After I woke up, or was there? I, I stayed at the Avon Temple for a while, just reading. Um, I mean, a lot." happened and Burke kind of turns goes we had to have a few meetings with the Alabastian Council about this. I mean Periton is forcibly demanding Solly back and we're trying our best to not do that given the circumstances that have come to light. Sure. And he kind of like tilts his head and looks back for it and Solly continues on. So I stayed there, I read for a bit. Um then Burke had to get back to work of course. I couldn't expect him just to stay all the time. Um, so after that, I, I met with, um, Lady Isla and, and Hammernar, who are, who are great, and Brooke just goes, and bad influences. Well, that's not very fair. They were peaches to us. Brooke <laughs> is a salty boy. I thought, I thought Panic was his peach because he's so sweet on him. Okay. Hammernar, what? <laughs> He hangs out at our place a lot, enough that we should arouse questions. He only comes by whenever we need something built, and that's been twice yeah. since we've met him. Yeah, and It'll like be to... sooner as well. Yeah, he'd like to build a lot with you, like a future. Well, for, for that dragon head we have, uh, I'd like to make a trophy room. Um, uh, Monty, did, did Hammernar tell me that thing that you told me? No, but Brooke's about to tell you. 
Oh. Brooks just kind of laughs and he goes, uh, good luck, he's married. Hammernar has a wife, but none of us have ever met her. Oh, well, mm. uh, probably didn't have much of a chance anyway, seeing as how you only let Azamar marry Azamar. That, <clears throat> and you can even see Solly just kind of go, ooh, like stiffen up a bit. He goes, <laughs> that is not, <laughs> that is not our choice. And you watch as Charlie kind of exits. He's got all kinds of different things. He's making the drinks. You hear steam, steam kind of sizzling off the sound of, of water. Um, and he walks over to Sully and he goes, all right, ready? And he's got like these different containers. And he starts by going into one container, which you realize is a giant jar of golden honey. Ooh. And he takes the cup and he just lets a whole bunch of honey fall to the bottom of the cup. Then he brings it back in. He grabs a small, small, tiny spoon of, of cinnamon, just a little bit. And he just gently dusts that in. Then he grabs a container and just pours in hot milk, hot creamy milk. And it just starts to stir it into this very sweet smelling drink. And then he adds a little bit of cream on top, just a little bit of cinnamon, and then just hands it gently to her. And she takes it and she goes, thank you. He goes, not a problem. Uh, you, I had to make something up. Uh, so hopefully this works. Uh, he hands you a drink, uh, Greckles. Um, it appears to be just kind of like a, a creamy tea. Uh, it, it doesn't really have milk in it. Um, but it tastes kind of cinnamony. It's kind of like a cinnamonish sort of tea. Hey, it works um, for me. Mm. Sorry, best I could do under the circumstances. And then you wanted this, and he gives you like this tiny, like espresso glass, Borky. And it's like bright red. It, the liquid inside is just like a deep, bright, ambery red. Consume the lava, Borky. So, so it looks like sriracha in a cup, then, essentially. Basically, yeah. Borky just kind of picks, uh, picks it up with, he picks it up with his thumb and his pointer finger, just smells it. Uh, I need to make a constitution check as you smell it. <laughs> oh. As someone who has drank a shot of Cholula before, good luck. Constant constitution check or saving throw? Uh, saving throw. Oh. That's 17. Okay, your eyes begin to water. Oh, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, mm. uh, task, you get the same drink as Sully uh, with the oh, honey right. and the cinnamon and the milk, and he hands it off to you. And he looks to you, Penny, and goes, uh, What do you want? Uh, I'll just have a cup of coffee, dark roast, cream, sugar. Absolutely. And he goes over, starts to get that done. And Brooke goes, uh, coffee, black. And like Charlie stops and he does it, looks over at Brooke with this like condescending look and goes, milk and sugar. And he goes back to it. <laughs> and Brooke Burke, just kind of bites his tongue like, damn it. Brooke, you don't have to impress anyone here. <clears throat> yeah, least of all us. Borky sips the whole tea at once. Okay, roll another constitution save at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one. 12. 19. Okay, you don't spit it all up, uh, but your sinuses and your lungs are cleared. Does this fluid um, start pouring out of every part of his head? Your nostrils start to run, your eyes begin to tear up, and you, whenever you take a breath in, it like burns. That's really good day. Uh, you are now, you now have for 24 hours resistance to cold damage. <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's hardcore. That's really... Rick, let's go fight a frost dragon. Wow, he is making noises I have never heard him make before. Yeah, most people this is, do. This is fantastic. <laughs> uh, Charlie hands you your coffee, uh, which is very, very nice. It's got even like one of those like kind of cool designs on the top almost you almost swear he did like a little like you know cappuccino thing but hmm. with the foam on the top he hands it to you and he hands Brooke the exact same cup of coffee too and Brooke bitterly like picks it up and drinks it uh Brooke kind of turns back over he takes a gulp and he goes we don't decide that just for your information who does the council the council decides everything and it's not just us, it's other politicians, things like that. It's a game. We're pieces in a game. And right now, Sally is a piece in a very big, dangerous game. And Sally kind of shrinks in her chair and Burke shakes and goes, I'm sorry. Do you feel this city's, uh, do you feel this city's rulers are corrupt? 
No, not at all. But we're trying to do what we can to survive and we're trying to do what's best. And oftentimes those two things don't align too often. Life has far too many gray areas, Brooke. It does, and we're trying our best. But even if I want to try my best, sometimes I'm shot down. But luckily with Stolly, we've been able to get what we've needed. With Isla and Hammernar's support, as well as Balfour Balton, though he's not here, we are able to keep her with us. That being said, that is now Periton's excuse to now monitor our shores and perhaps land here. They believe we are holding an oracle of theirs hostage. Even if that's not what we're doing, that's how it's being worded, and that is enough to become dangerous. Do you understand? Hmm. Uh, now, here's a question, though. If they feel that this oracle is under a hostage situation, why don't you just arrange a visit so they can publicly and visibly see that this is not the case? Brooke slams down his cup of coffee. What do you think they'll do if they see Solly? They don't care about getting Solly back. They want to instigate a war with us. And if they start it on your soil, that gives you all the more right. Wait, sorry. Who, 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 what? Who, who are they? Did we meet them? <clears throat> I can't believe he's forgotten. But then again, I can't believe he's forgotten. What did you put in that drink, Charlie? And Charlie just leans back and just starts laughing. He just goes, enough. Borky. That's The problem is, is even if we instigate war with Periton, they have an actual military. We it would, don't. It would be, we, this town would be drastically outnumbered, Borky. Yeah, plus, plus the uh, forces that you do have are currently out fighting the fire giants. We have enemies on all sides at this point, and it is making things very bad for us at the moment. How did that happen? I don't know. And maybe a visit from the Silver King might alleviate this? We're hoping to do an alliance with him. Um, Nomeria is willing to aid us as well. They're just quite far off, given that we've returned their ship, which honestly, thank you. That was on you. You did help, I suppose. And the cabbage kind of tilts his head in confusion and sips his coffee, kind of like magic. Like what? Um, mm. we that, also some, that somehow tipped the scales in Alabas's favor? It did, yes. Nomeria, we had neutral. They didn't quite care for us. I mean, they certainly were interested in the magical properties of this land, but now that we've shown good favor, thanks to you, they have considered an alliance with us. Um, what about the thing we got? The, the orb? From our latest adventure? <laughs> hmm. Not sure if that was put into place here. I don't know if that has anything to do with it so much as... It was just us doing a job. Wait, did you steal an orb from a graveyard? No, 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 no. No. This we this stole was an a... orb from a dragon. Mm. This was a matter of creating a waypoint, so to speak. We oh. we went north. Oh, I'm sorry. We went north. Uh, we headed northwest of here, past a uh, demented evil forest and some uh, burnt down villages and lands. Old human settlement? Yes. More like an old human kingdom. Kingdom? To the do west I, of... Do I still have my map copy? No, Moidos has that. She took that. Darn it. If you've submitted something of evidence of that, that would be very important for us. I mean, learning about the old civilization would be helpful. Not should... to me, but to historians here. You should well, the, speak... the, the, oh, the historians are actually the ones that have the information. Oh, perfect. Then we're good to go. We're excellent there. That's good. And Sally just kind of like is drinking her drink. She looks really content actually right now watching you guys all talk together. Is she uh, kicking her feet? No, nah, she's, she's, she's cross-legged. She's sitting, just drinking, kind of watching. Um, and Brooke kind of turns back and goes, for now, we're just keeping Sally comfortable. We're also trying to get her out more. And she kind of nods like, yep, yeah, I'm going out. Basically, so I don't look like a prisoner, more or less, which I'm not. But I understand the safety concerns. Very least, I'm entertained. Brooke kind of sips his coffee and goes, you know, with Isla, that is a very concerning statement. Mm. He shudders a little bit. 
Well, since you, I assume that means that we, you guys are in the higher and middle districts more often than we are. So tell us a little bit more about that. That's something we've been interested in investigating, but we have no access to just yet. Oh, uh, the council district. Um, that's right beneath the attic. Um, I mean, that's where all the high temples are for more of the dominant um, clergies in Alabast. Um, the council building is there as well. A couple businesses, but nothing like you just can walk into and shop at. It's like a you know specialty place. Strange. It's less populated then. Yeah, it's for specific members of Alavast, um, politicians and people of um, high ranking, I guess. Is that the proper way to say it, Burke? Burke just kind of nods like, yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's very pretty. Um, the temples are gorgeous. Um, I'm actually staying with the Illinois temple at the moment, um, getting work done there, more or less, just kind of helping them out. And um, I talk a lot to the head priestess there. She's been... Question, is there a Oriara temple in the center, in the higher or the middle districts? Um, that's kind of a lesser god, so I don't think so. Brooke, uh, like, sits on his glass and goes, there's, um, I know there is an Oriara temple uh, to the east of us, uh, down down the coastline. There's a Balton village, actually, named after Balton, Bal uh, Balfour Balton. Uh, there is a temple nearby there. Ah, uh, excellent. Uh, then you're, then a small little dwarf miniature-sized robot will be none of your concern, then. A what? There's a, there's a construct we found. It should be in your notes as well. Construct we oh. found meandering about. He's trying to establish a temple, but he unfortunately might uh, break and enter in a few places without his knowing. He's kind of innocent in that way. Oh, well then you're, okay, you're gonna need this. He goes over, Burke just like pulls out a notebook and starts flipping through it and he rips off a note and he signs it and he hands it to you. Yeah, we were currently holding him in a drunk tank at the moment. He's got like blue clothes, doesn't he? Little short guy. Are you giving this to us like we own him? Technically, they're still considered property. Oh, what did he do? Uh, public, uh, public preaching without a warrant, essentially. Well, was he right? It's not a matter of whether Orky. he was right or wrong. It's a matter of that he didn't have a warrant. I'm, 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 I'm having trouble talking right now. Can I have some, can I have some milk? I'll get you some milk, son. He watches Charlie Doug's thanks, back. Dad, and... Thanks, Dad. <laughs> stop, Brooks. Stop calling him Dad. Whatever. Well, like I said, he's innocent. He just wants to talk about his god as he's apparently programmed. He's not going to do anything harmful. I mean, he saved our lives in the middle of the Fleur de Mort forest, so... Uh, he should, uh, he's harmless, but I guess we'll go retrieve him. Yeah, here you go. He hands you the piece of paper. All right. Do, do, you, do you want me and Panic, Panic to do that while you guys hang out? Or do you want to do well, that I think, I think, I think Panic also wants to get his new dragon jacket. Ooh, yes. That is ready today. And I'm tired of walking around in the cold with the ice touching my feet. I'd like some boots. Same. What about pants? What the fuck are pants? <laughs> oh, uh, pants? <laughs> Solly, like, immediately was like, oh, pants are things you... you Task know holds his hand up as if to say, like, no, it's fine, I actually know. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Don't uh, worry about it. It's been a sore spot with, uh... Yeah, it's just been a sore spot for a while. Fair enough. Um, no, I'm doing okay. I wish I wasn't causing so much of a conflict. And Brooke is like, no, you're fine. It's not you. It's people trying to make a problem where there doesn't need to be one. After the slight with the cart chase, as well as a few other things, uh, it doesn't surprise me that Periton would get on our bad side eventually. They just have excuses now. It doesn't make much of a difference, to be honest. Something that I don't understand is that if they have the manpower and the means, and they definitely had the means when they were in town, why haven't they attacked? That's what I don't understand. And this is the most terrifying thing about it, because it's winter. You're expecting a full frontal assault as soon as the snow melts? No, but we need to be ready for one if push comes to shove, more or less. How the other can thing we, do we could that? do is 
how can you do that? You keep doing what you're doing for the city. Leave that up to us. Like I said, we're finding allies where we can. What would work best is if we can try and alleviate some of these problems around us. The fire giants to the south, these dragon cultists to the north. And I just, oh, you see Brooke just kind of get like exhausted. And Charlie kind of comes over and kind of just gently pats him on the shoulder. Well, you need you needn't I'm... worry about a black dragon to the to the northwest now. Bor Borky starts reaching behind the thing, trying to find the milk. Just Charlie, knock Charlie stuff over. hands <laughs> Charlie hands you a, like a like a teacup of milk. He hands you. A cup of milk. <sighs> Thank you. It's really much better now. <clears throat> now, Borky, what did we learn? Oh, it's really good shit. That's that. That's good enough. Look, we're gonna try and do what we can. We're trying to get allies where we can. We can't ask of anything for you except for what you've been doing. Doros does keep vouching for you, so I suppose I, I suppose I should thank you. Don't uh, well, so hard done by with that. Mm. Tash just that... gives Brock a nod. Look, if you can get that man to say anything, then it's worth listening to. So you know what? There you go. Also, I hear he's dating one of your employees as well. Yeah. yeah. It's actually pretty adorable. It. I've known the man since we found him on the Great Peaks. It's bizarre to me. Not in a bad way. It's he's, bizarre he's, to he's, me. It's, it's bizarre to me, too. If you want more information on him, just speak to his mother. She's no! Great. Oh, that's even more bizarre to me. Don't even get me started on that whole other thing. I know, it's weird, right? They should have eaten him. Not that part. Not what? <laughs> Charlie just starts laughing. It's just like, you're one to talk, son. He goes, stop calling me. Yeah, all right. Yeah. You know, honestly, Rourke, <laughs> if you want to know more about the situation, you can always come to our place. Mmm. No. No, 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 no. Insight that. Oh, oh, what are we not good enough for you? That's what I mean. Oh, <laughs> god damn it, that's an eight. Let me roll garbage shit. tonight, boys. I'm gonna fucking roll in. Yeah, on why not? Shit. Let's go. Uh, natural, <laughs> natural one. one. 16. Every time Panic. there's a natural. Sorry. Panic, on. he's secretly in love with you. That's why he can't come <laughs> to a tavern. I, I love... knew it. I know that one. <laughs> uh, task. Uh, you get the sense that it's, um, it's not really like he doesn't like you guys. It just, he doesn't want to be seen at a place like that as a, as type of person he is. Ta Task will just take a drink of his tea and then just say it out loud. Can't roam with the common folk. Can't roam with the green folk. And he takes another sip of his coffee. Too many people talk. Orcs in Tricadia are not good things. Borky, Borky is just stand, staring, just like kind of giving him that side eye. Just Borky doesn't know what he means. Does Borky know what he means? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about Tracadia. You have no idea. What's a Tracadia? Is that is that is that like a coven? It's a country. Uh... Borky, we we went over this yesterday. No, earlier this morning. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tracadia is a country that's split in half by a large mountain range. Uh, there are orc tribes all over the place, and they are some orcs that are here from tribes that are more hospitable. Charlie kindly and service. You can have a conversation before they try and kill you. Yeah, more or less uh, like that. Yeah, my dad, my dad didn't care for those types. No, and neither did my father. So mm. generally, orcs in Tricadia, and with good warranting, are not good they tend to be killers and murderers and animals but surely uh tash just like holds his hand up but surely with a coming war would the orcs those who are into bloodlust would they not want to be a part of such a thing the Even war the is with us here not tricadia tricadia wants no part hmm I apologize if this seems like, I apologize if this seems in vain, but even if it has nothing to do with them, war still has some kind of effect on other neighboring countries, even if it's not in their crosshairs. They, they're not like us. 
they're not like Balfour Balton's armies. They believe in destruction. They believe in death. Yep. War for the sake of some outcome doesn't exist for them. That's not a good fight. No. It is not. War for the sake of destroying everything. Hmm. That appeals to them. They wouldn't side with us. They wouldn't side with Periton. They wouldn't side with anyone. They'd side for themselves. Or they take advantage of the carnage and do their own carnage. I'll just attack both of them. Just hear about a good fight and I'll just come running. And just go for both sides. Absolutely. The native orcs here, we might be able to convince. But even then, it's not the most reliable ally to have, more or less. But Fair enough. Hmm. It's a complicated thing, task. I understand with your military background, this does incite some ideas, but there are a lot of layers to this. We don't even know if there's going to be a war, but we have to be able to respond if there is. And Tass, like, taps his head. That's why I'm thinking tactically as far as I can with this. Same with the council, but right now, build allies. We need allies anyway with the other threats. Honestly, if we could get allies to deal with both the other threats and just leave the rest of us to deal with Periton, we might have a chance. You want us to do it? <laughs> You're f four people. I don't expect you to do very much, but at the very least, least, you could be at your best behavior in the future if we have diplomats in the city. To be fair, Borg, we've accomplished a lot with just the four of us. Yeah, we took out Dim Elma guys who was hiding in the caves. Some of them, not all of them. Yeah, speaking of but... which, did, did, you ever find, did you guys find the invisible one? No, we've been searching, but it sounds like it was based outside of the city, so that's not within our jurisdiction to look too closely into it. Oh, if it makes God. its way into the city, it's dead. I guarantee you that. But it is being very smart as to not enter. So it's like finding a needle in a haystack, more or less, right now. And, and waging an attack on an actual dragon would probably not be wise either, even if it is just one demon. No. Absolutely no, bro. That's not. that's something that I've never understood. Why have the fire giants been attacking? Is it a territory they want thing? The territory. They want slaves. They're conquerors. That's what they do. The moment we show up, we were free game. Once they realized villages were being built so far south, and there was a trail of us leading up to the city, they went crazy. Well, why they don't... attacked ruthlessly. Why don't you tell the fire giants that the cultists in the north are talking shit? Solly like laughs, kind of like, <laughs> and then, like immediately covers her mouth and like looks really guilty and looks away. <laughs> uh, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, we just got a fire giant. It's like the dragon said, you guys don't even aren't even real fire, and I'm assuming the fire giants are like, fuck that, you know? Didn't they? I'm didn't not even they? sure if the I'm not sure if the fire giants would care, Borky. They wouldn't care at all. But would the cultists care? Yeah, we'll tell the cultists to the fire giants and talk and shit. That's we inverted. We I inverted. honestly don't know why the cultists are here at all. Mm. We figured that out, maybe, but we don't know, and I don't want to send anyone anywhere near that right now. There's currently a giant red dragon encircling what used to be a farming village. Not exactly a place you want to send a scout at the moment. And if it's all the same to you, I'd rather not face off against a fully grown and developed one. Oh, yes. One dragon was all it took to take down that village. It's not a dragon you want to go anywhere near. Much less whatever else is there. I heard rumors of other dragons as well. So there could be more than just one. It could be five or six. It's not, not even counting what's on the ground. We did get visual of cultists, so there's at least... A decent supply of cultists in that village now. This might seem out of the blue, but are there any other dragons besides the Silver King? Maybe a gold or a bronze or a, bra a brass dragon that could come to our aid? <laughs> gold? <laughs> oh, no one's seen a gold dragon in years. We have. Really? A full ancient gold dragon? There were smaller dragons, but where there are children, there are adults. It's been a while, and th just refresh my memory of character. Was that to the south where we met with? That Alpha was where the... you met with. Yeah, that's where you met with the um, the Griffin Riders. They were young, little, little, tiny ones. They weren't. They weren't big, but they were. They were there. 
And that was to the south? That was to yeah. the south, yeah. Look, if I mean, you want to go out and play Dragon Ambassador, get yourselves eaten, be my guests. But, no. No, but there might be, there might be those that follow uh, dragons. We have heard of tales of a silver clutch of kobolds. I have heard rumors of that as well. When we took evidence for Artemis, there was a book that we read, and somehow we lost it. I don't know who displaced it, but we've heard rumors about that. They could be allies, but that is, there is a giant dragon cult between us and them. Hmm. Granted, they might already be allies now. They probably aren't fans of the dragon cult, potentially, though. Cobalt culture, I'm not aware of. That would be more your jurisdiction, more or less. Keep me in the loop in this. I could. Honestly, that might not be a bad idea. If you're willing to be, well, four people, it's enough to be an elusive task force. You could slip by. Mm. Maybe. This does have potential. Again, but... just keep me in the loop, then. Absolutely. I know that you have an address now. Solly. And Solly's just kind of like, sorry. <laughs> Bro, don't, don't. And you didn't visit. <laughs> Tax looks to him with a smirk. What? Why would I? After everything I've I... done to you. Or and yet here we are drinking tea being buddy buddy. You can I... do this over ale. I know I'm not when I'm on duty. I can't do that when I am working. Then off duty, Brog. We're making this easier for you. I have paperwork time. off duty. I my life is so much different is than it, yours. Is this is this why you can't find love? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Sally, full talents over the beak. What did Sally's... that shot of espresso do to you? Charlie, literally, like you hear a spoon drop. And there's just silence. Thank you so much Broken. for the key. I'm going to step outside. <laughs> More key just <laughs> walks outside. <sighs> Borky leaves. Yeah, Borky leaves. Yeah, you just like... Ding, 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 ding. You see Borky kind of wow. running oh, out of frame. <laughs> he has been awful lately. He right, guys? Bork just shoots lately. up in his seat and goes to the back. And Charlie's like, Bork, Bork. Damn it. Well, this one's well. Watch Solly. Just, hey, Solly. Solly just looks, is he gonna, do you want me to talk to him? No, I mean, I, I've known him longer. Let me go talk to him. You hear <laughs> a door in the back as Charlie disappears. Uh, well, there goes that chummy little bit of negotiations. It's a sore point for him. Mm. I imagine it would be, and especially with how, well, you know, limited the selection he's got. I still think that's so... That's not right. You guys are wolves and we're dogs. Grickles twinges for a minute, remembering Lady Isla's words. And just kind of shakes it off as, as if maybe it's just nothing. He tries really hard. I know he's made mistakes, and honestly, so have you. And maybe the choices you made seemed like the right ones at the time, and that's why they're justifiable. And, and same for him. The way he's hated you and the way that you've hated him, I think, I think it just needs to be let go. But Greckles, Greckles, balls up, Greckles balls up a talon, leaves to go find Borky. Uh, Greckles, it's... Oh. Bye, no, Greckles. no, we need to make this right. It's okay. Greckles, it's okay. I mean, I've let go of it. I mean, I stopped being angry a long time ago. I don't think any of us have been angry about this. We figured it's just Bork doing his job. Granted, yes. we've maybe there's been some resentment, but that's only been because we haven't had any communication. He didn't want to arrest you. But to protect everyone, he had to. And we didn't want to do what we did. But fear is crippling. Just... And you had to survive. If Honestly, they... that was all I knew before I came to the city. So, yes. Same and... here, actually. 
we're trying our best to do what's right for people. And it means a bit of self-sacrifice. Okay. I like more than a bit. Not for you. You guys can leave tomorrow and go wherever you want. But Burke and I are stuck here. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks. Sully, um, this is our home now. And we're going to look after it just as much as anyone else here would. And I don't know about everyone else, but I wouldn't even think about leaving tomorrow. We finally have a home. Mine's gone. I have no place to go besides here. I like it here, too. We're not asking you to do anything, but just know that that's what's going on. With Periton, with Brork, with the city. We're trying to do what we can, and sometimes it's hard to make everyone happy. There's a woman who's part of the Avon clergy who wants to see Brooke gone and his racial inclusion program abolished. Who? Her name is Irma. Sounds like a racist to me. <laughs> <laughs> Solly like slowly turns her head and looks at you panic like, what? Irma, Look, uh, she's she's racist. just an. She, oh my god, <laughs> Sally Fancy. She's she's an Avon Paladin. She's had bad history with orcs, and she doesn't like Bork because of it. But it's pressure. There's a lot of pressure. And now there's a lot of pressure on me, but I can't buckle this time. And I'm doing it for the right people. <sighs> I wish Sully would have helped me though. What what happened between you two that got you so mad at him? Do you remember that ghost in yeah. the dream where you were? Yeah. Lies, that was his name, right? Yeah. We talked before you left, before I woke up. He told me to forgive you. He told me to forgive myself. And he told me to talk to Solar in a way that I think he would listen. And um, I think I took that a little bit too seriously and I may or may not have just, I, I, I screamed at a celestial, I screamed at, at a deity in its own right. And, and now oh, it was all a blur. It was all a weird nightmare. And to be honest, I don't remember much of it because I don't want to think about it. I just, I told him to stop telling me what to do. I told him to stop commanding me. I told him to help me. I just yelled at him to help me. And I guess if he can't do that, I'm not worth having anymore. Is that what he said to you or is that what you're thinking? He didn't say anything. He, I just it disappeared. I woke up and that was it. Can I roll a, what would this be, an Ar Arcana check to see how Azamar and their patrons are connected? Yeah, absolutely. Arcana. Arcana? Or religion, uh, Arcana, your choice. Uh, 23. 23. Um, you know, it varies, um, especially given your, your, your circumstances with, uh, with Lady Isla and, and the other Azamar. Um, Dreams tend to be the most common way um, of communication. Prayer for those who are like more of a paladin cleric, sort of. Whoa. I am very, <laughs> I am very sorry about that. I actually tried to check my phone to see what time it was, and there was a video still on my screen. Sorry. <laughs> I am very sorry. About uh, that. I'm very sorry. Forky gets a phone call. <laughs> Moshi Mosh um, Forky days. Uh, you know that you know that sometimes they can actually like if if the celestial exists in the material plane. Um, then that makes a whole other sort of relationship. Um, depends on where the celestial exists. I mean, it, it's very circumstantial. Most commonly though, you know it's through dreams or through prayer is how they can communicate. Um, when it's usually through dreams, it's, it's, it's then by the power of the celestial to command the conversation. If it's through prayer, it's kind of both ways. Um, and then obviously with, with, if the celestial exists in the material plane, you'd have to seek them out and talk to them essentially. And for other planes, who knows? 
I was I was thinking uh, I was wondering specifically if if a page if a patron can ever dissociate themselves with their Asimar. Yes, um, they they can. Uh, sometimes they will. Usually, Asimar in that circumstance are called fallen Asimar. Um, it usually means that the um, the Asimar has gone rogue in most cases, or doesn't uphold the values of the celestial parent. You're not sure if that's what this is. But that is something that can happen. But usually it is a very clear defiance. Um, but the circumstances of it, you don't know quite how bad it is. Uh, Solly. Yeah? You said you can still use your clerical powers, correct? I mean, Oren hasn't abandoned me, but... Mm, well, I, I think ever since you know, the, the thing that happened. I, I think there's been a lot of reevaluation going on. And I think, I think for the most, I think maybe the reason you're, I think maybe Solar is just reevaluating his approach on all this. But, I mean, we only met the guy once, but, uh, uh, well. I mean, if I'm Celestial, not... if Celestials can be flawed, maybe he's just trying to be a good dad, not doing a good job about it. I know about that. <laughs> That's really bold to say. And I kind of agree. But... That's me, Mr. Bold. <laughs> Speaking of which, you look like you've been beaten up again. <sighs> when am oh, I not getting beaten up? Fair enough. In fact, do you want to show him that little trinket that we found for you? Trink? Uh... <laughs> what was that again? Your sword, dude. Oh, <laughs> the ch the joke is you get beaten up so much you have a weapon that can actually like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Activates when you seems, get beaten up. Seems fate has a sense of humor, and uh, I came across this sword called Copy Cutter, and I I pull it out. I'll let her see that there's no blade there. That that's not a sword. Task well, not right. Arm. <laughs> Nothing happens. Dick. <laughs> Sorry, I thought that. Taz just go, shrugs and goes, sorry, I thought that would work. I didn't, oh, want, to, it, I did, I didn't want to glass you. It doesn't, it, doesn't, <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. I think the sword knows creatures that I've associated as being friendly towards me. Oh. So even if you try to hit me or something, it won't take its form. But say if I, if I, um, if I get stabbed or if I get burned, a ethereal blade shows up that takes the form of whatever kind of damage I have sustained. Oh. So, yeah, the, it appears I'm actively being encouraged to get hit by things now. That's really bad. It is. <laughs> but somehow... I hope I never use this. Yeah, me, me too. I mean, last time I, I remember is um, you got hit by lightning and then you were dead and then you flirted with me and it was kind of awkward. But um, I'm glad to see what? that you haven't had a near-death experience since then. Or oh, the really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got like a million scars to show it. <laughs> well, let's, let's not get too... Let's not make too many assumptions. So. If you ever need a healer, um, there is an Orin temple. In the lower helpful. clergy district, they right. they they heal for free. So if you know you ever that would be helpful. Break that, an arm most of, or anything. most of the time I'm in mortal danger. I'm out uh, out of the wilderness. That's scary. I, <laughs> yeah, it is honestly, kind of our job. My life. Honestly, I don't miss it. I love having a bed. That's oh, it's really nice. This may not be the right time or place, Sully, but would there be any chance we could at least keep communications? She kind of leans to where Brooke disappeared, leans back, and she goes, just send letters now. I think we're good. We do have a mailbox. Accepting. Yeah, we do We do have a carrier now. Expect also, dragons. Uh, oh, adorable. Um, I, I will say this. With the Silver King coming, I'm allowed to invite some guests. Would you guys be interested in coming? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I Bork, 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 Borky says on the window, yes. <laughs> oh, he's right there. Great. Um, I think I'd like to invite you. It'd be nice to have some friends there. Um, you know how Brooke said I was a piece in the game? Yeah. 
I might be a very important piece in that game. Just remember you're still a person. I know. I know. But I have to do what's best for you guys. Tat, I want to insight check that. Yeah, go ahead. That same. Never one, never mind. Damn it. Oh, wait, no. Oh, oh, I got a seven. <laughs> that is like my third nat one tonight. Uh, 22. 22. You beat out her 17. Uh, Tasking and Greckles, you're just like, okay, sure. She's probably just nervous about being a meeting a diplomat. Um, panic. There's a nervousness there. Um, you're not too familiar with it, but given what Brooke has said, um, as well as other things about the council deciding things, um, you wouldn't put it past the council to potentially um, bargain with Solly uh, with the Silver King potentially. That seems to be where her discomfort is coming from, is is who the Silver King actually will be towards her, essentially. Mm. Is Borky still in the window? Yeah, he's fogging it up with his breath. <sighs> Gre Greckles goes to the door. He draws a frowny Bork face. <laughs> Borky, you get in here, you apologize immediately. Why, was I wrong? Y yeah, you were. You were yeah, wrong you to say that. Your mouth got us in trouble yet again. Now get in here and apologize. Borky looks up to the sky. I think he was asking if he was incorrect, but... <laughs> it's not a matter of right or wrong, Borky. It's doing the right thing. Borky just shouts isn't... loud, I'm sorry! There. <laughs> <laughs> that was me slapping my head, by the way, not Solly. <laughs> Solly just looks kind of befuddled, and she starts laughing, and she goes, nothing's changed. No, no. nothing really has. Oh, nothing has, has changed. I will say this, I wouldn't mind seeing you guys in the middle districts. I think you guys could take advantage of it. I'll try and vouch for you, but... I do think we should... I was actually about ready to write a letter to Abacus about that. Well, I mean, yeah, Abacus would be the person to send it to. We could, I mean, I if I had some sort of semblance of power, I would definitely put a, you know, a check mark on that. But I'm sure if I could convince Burke, I'm sure he would probably sign off on it too. Tass just points to panic. Let's just not sing happy birthday again to her. Well, it won't be your birthday. Remember what happened last time. I do remember what happened last time, and she was not powerful enough to make me do shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Burp comes out from the back, just kind of adjusts his, his beard, kind of like it's like he stops in front of a mirror and kind of fixes it. B Borky and... knocks on the window, breathes, and draws a frowny face. <laughs> and Porky makes a face like, my bad. Mm. Solly, we should we should go. And Solly kind of stands up and goes, yeah. Um, it was nice seeing you all again. And uh, best of luck with Indeed. everything. It was yeah. a pleasure. Don't be Pass. a stranger. Yep. Perhaps. Right. Oh, Burke kind of turns to you. <clears throat> yeah. If, there, if there's anything that needs doing, you know where to find us. I do. I'll let Doros know if anything arises. Greckles just gives a nod. Task will stand like almost at the ready and just look at Brork. Soldier, a broken body is worse than a broken mind. Get some drink in you. Get recreation. You need sleep. Uh, yeah, I've been told that quite a lot. Then do it. Hey. <sighs> have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> A gold star. <laughs> Mark is gonna insight on that one. I I don't even know what the hell you would roll for that. On your, Persuasion. Your Persuasion. I'm, I am not trying to be shitty. I'm just telling him to have a great day. Okay. I gotta grab his wisdom super fast. I really hope his. God, his, this is um, dangerous. I really hope his character sheet did not reset. No, it did not. Uh, that is an eighteen insight against, on him against my persuasion against your persuasion i almost rolled religion for some reason because <laughs> it's right below <laughs> persuasion you're losing oh, yeah uh, 20. 20. Brooke kind of stops and goes how would you recommend i go about having a good day <laughs> well stay positive <laughs> sneak out know on that a you any raid <laughs> Know that you have our support, and 
Forky's in the window. Sending good vibes. Enjoy the people around you. Bork kind of turns and looks at Solly, and Solly just kind of looks up at you, at you and then looks to Bork, and then looks back to you and kind of like, oh, thumbs up. Like, yeah, totally knowing where this is going. If nothing else, it was actually really good to clear all this up. No. With some exception, glares at Borky. Did you say no? <laughs> no, he said, he said, I know. I know. Uh, Solly has been adamant about this, and I've been stubborn. Part of my orc heritage. I apologize. Well, to be completely candid, would letters <laughs> be sufficient? As long as we know what information is coming and going, yes. Excellent. That's but all no, I could I, ask. No, I will also be reading the letters because of political reasons. Then we will be sure to also include Hello, Brork, in all of our letters. <laughs> Great. I can't wait. <laughs> be, sure to, be sure to give a little heart at the end. Now Making note of that. You heard him. <laughs> Bork, you heard that. He's drawing one right now on the window. E -e 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 -e. Yeah, just like, just like that. That'd be perfect. Solly, do you want to go to the park? Solly goes, yeah, that sounds good. It's like birds. Yeah, there's probably cardinals. Um, there's take care. Pigeons too. Mm, yeah, pigeons, my favorite bird. <laughs> <laughs> Borky goes wide-eyed. <laughs> All right, Solly, uh, here's your cloak. And he kind of like puts Solly's cloak on and kind of gestures her out and goes, it's nice seeing you. Um, make your way out. Do not stop anywhere, please. Don't get me written up for this. And pick up your construct immediately. Very well. After we retrieve our new clothing, we will go pick up the construct. He's in the lower clergy district in a holding cell. All right, let's go. Thing. And as he stops, he turns to Charlie and goes, thanks, Dad. And Charlie goes, kind of gives him a mini salute. And ching, door closes. Charlie kind of turns to Solly goes, he's a good kid. He is a good kid. Charlie sits down and he goes, I found him on a mountaintop. Oh. Let's hear it then. <laughs> Did you say that out loud? Oh, as you pull out your fan fiction book, go on. <laughs> no, not about like that. Their, are we talking no. about somebody behind their back as they just left? No, but if you want to be his friends, I'd like you to know. But, but Borky sticks his head into the front door. Is it okay? Is it safe to come in now? Yes, you can come in. Borky just kind of like Dark Souls roll up, rolls up to the... <laughs> Tink, tink, tink. The door closes behind you. <clears throat> that was crazy, you know. What are you up? No, Charlie points a finger at you, Bork. He goes, you need to learn how to watch your mouth. I'm sorry, Dade. <laughs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Oh. <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's really... I, 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 Ten I, panic damage. Oh. Panic, <laughs> panic oh. puts, a, puts a hand on Borky's shoulder and he says, welcome to the club. Oh, it really hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Like, Borky's like wincing. Oh, oh. Like it, like oh, it's gonna like need, gonna need a willow special for that one. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you're disheartened. You, you have penalties on all wisdom checks. No, I'm sure. Twenty dad damage. Uh... <laughs> Taz looks over to, uh, to Charlie. What are you willing to share? I found him on a mountaintop. He was beaten half to shit. Orcs in Tricadia do not like any semblance of life or good. And that is what Brook is to me and to himself. I found him on top of a mountaintop because he was trying to destroy it. He was 12. He Why? wanted to... Sorry? Uh, I was about to, I was, I was just gonna test, just like, why was he trying to destroy a mountain? Because the mountain was his actual father. Oh. Hmm. Zali Vavos, the God Mountain, is a mountain peak in the ranges of the mountains of Chicadia. Can, is... can you type that out? Zali Vavos, sure. Zali Vavos, the God Mountain. Paul, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't let it go. I could. I... No, it's fine. <laughs> oh man. 
<laughs> he was just punching the mountaintop. <laughs> he kind of laughs at that. Says, I laugh now, but for him at the time, I mean, it was sad. I mean, you're 12. You don't know any better. You know, an orc is mature by the age of 12. But even for him, he had a lot of growing to do. I found him there. I took him in. And boy, did people hate me for that. <laughs> yeah. Chicadian's uh, not really the most um, understanding. No. And Burke picked fights when he was young. And he had a trouble fitting in. He was an Asmar, yes, but an orc also. And that part of him, he hates a lot. I can't blame him for it. It doesn't make it okay, but I understand. He means well, and that girl he means well too as well. They're kindred spirits, I think, in some way. They've lost their way and they need someone to help them get back on track, I think. Hmm. I just hope, and he turns to look at you, Greckles, you understand that. Yeah. I know that she's your friend as well, and I know that she's mentioned in the past that you two have been close. Just know other people might get close to her as well. Look, Charlie, it's complicated, but I have my own love to look forward to. I just don't know if I'll ever see her again. But there was something about Sully. I She reminded me of me growing up lost, trying to fit in somewhere, trying to go somewhere, that would be impossible to go back to. It just... I can't explain it. He walks over and puts a hand on your shoulder. It's exactly why I took a screaming orc home one night on top of a mountain. Same sort of thing. It is interesting how fate moves us. It is. But I will say this. If your son does have feelings well i shouldn't be the one to get in the way even I then want... it's up to the council but and that's the hell of it isn't it politics is the way it is mm. just sad story statement to make but she's right to what extent would they control their relationship it just seems maddening. I mean, I, he sits down. I don't know the full details. Uh, I know that Isla and Brook had the potential to be together. That was brought up in council meetings. Brook did put in a consultation for that. He, he was considering it. He, Brook is lonely. He, he is lonely. The, 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 the official can I, can, I can, I have, can I have sex documments? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not even saying that it's Borky. So no, I can't no, get I said, I, 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 no, I, I just... No, it's it's. Can I has relationship. It's more marriage. It's symbolic. It's 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 connecting two clergies together. It makes them stronger, more or less. Do you, do you I, understand this? It's like merchants marrying their sons and daughters. It's the same sort of thing, except they're on a grander scale. I don't know how the humanoid uh, gods work, but since there is uh, depictions of gods actually being walking around in the mortal realm. Would the uniting of two of these Asimar together, would that actually strengthen the god in some way? That is a good question. And I would love to know. Because I do wonder that myself. Greckles is really distraught. He's we really were. angry at hearing that. At hearing, hearing how what should be something beautiful it's just processed. Yeah, we live in a world where even romance and marriage is a political move. <laughs> it shouldn't matter! That, that's, my, that's my cup. You just broke a cup. I'll put Sorry. it on Bork's tap. It's fine. Sorry. <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> You're just talking about... Wow, all right. It Good shouldn't job. matter. It just shouldn't matter. It shouldn't be that have you ever heard the story about the wolf and the dog? No, I haven't. It's a super simple story. And Brooks talked about it. Isla's talked about it. 
a uh, long time ago, there was a wolf and a dog. The dog lived in a dog house and had food and everything it could have ever wanted and had people who loved it. And the wolf was by itself. It could go anywhere it wanted to and had a hard time finding food. One day the wolf and the dog met and the wolf said to the dog, look at all these fabulous things you have. You have people who love you. You have a warm bed to sleep on and food. And the wolf asked, how, how can, I, can I have that? How can I have that? And the dog said, you can have it all, but you just have to put this chain around your neck. And to that, the wolf left saying it would rather starve than put the chain around its neck. Asimar have a difficult life, but they are catered to. <clears throat> they have homes, they're welcome in any temple, really. But the flip side of that is they don't get to choose too much later on. And you guys, you have to fight for what you want. You have to battle for it, mm. but you're free. So that's what she meant. Uh... <clears throat> so what happened to the wolf? <laughs> he was free. He continued on. Oh. He lived his harsh life. Did he find love? I'm just wondering. <laughs> what is with you and love? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I <I'm laughs> nothing. <laughs> just he's just twiddling his fingers. Ah, oh, you know. It's no anyway, I need to clean up and uh, reopen the place. The privacy yeah. special tends to cost me a few customers. Very well. We'll take All our right. leave then. Mm. Um, before I go. And yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk over to walk over to him and like get up in his ear. Just uh, you're from Tracadia, yes? Yes, I was the captain of Tracadia Capital. Does the name Grimtongue ring any bells? No. Okay. Thanks for your business. <laughs> ah, you like yell in his ear and he like kind of like rubs his ear like ah, oh, it's just okay. Well, I lean away before I say that. <laughs> All right, that's good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. All right, let's 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 go pick up our uh, clothing and go get logged. Yeah, let's go to the slammer. Okay. <clears throat> do we want to split? So, out of character, do we want to split up and go to these two things separately? or do we want let's, to do this? let's go together for okay. the safety. Uh, so where are you going first? Do you want to meet, you want to meet Weimar, or do you want to meet up with... Uh... Nine. That's up to you guys. I don't think it matters that much. Which one's on the way? Which one's the first one on nine, the way home? Nine's the robot. And yeah, nine, nine is your construct seamstress. Yeah, sure, our, uh, our 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 other weaponry and shit. That's closer to home, so we want to do nine first. Okay. Yeah. Plus, I would like to not be cold anymore. All right. So you show up to nines. You had three things ordered. You had a jacket for panic. You had the um outfit for Tarisk, and then you had the outfit for yourself mm -hmm. is what you had ordered. Okay, I'm just double checking. All right. So you show up. Uh, currently, the dwarven woman is shoveling out snow. I forgot her name, which is bad. Uh-oh. Uh, Dwarf McLady. Dwarf McLady. She's shoveling out snow. She was one of your students. I, I, I There's a huge list of names, and she's one of them. Um... And she's just currently kind of busy. But you see inside, sitting cross-legged next to like what looks like a kind of like a low burning forge is Nines, currently holding a glass of wine, like swirling it around. But she can't drink it. She's a robot. She's got a glass in her hand, so. <laughs> I mean, you, you still got to be classy. Mm. It's all about presentation. Good. You've returned. Yes. Uh, we just wanted to see how progress was. Progress has been excellent. Step forward, one with the horns. I assume that's me. I yes, that forward. is you, as you're the only one in this vicinity with horns. Get in here, you. All right, I step forward. <laughs> Remove this fill, and she like gestures towards the jacket you're currently wearing. <laughs> All, right. All right, but don't burn this one. <laughs> she grabs it, and do you want to stop her? She's gonna throw it into the forge. I'm going to mage hand it as soon as it leaves her hand. <laughs> okay. It foof. And then gently like goes over like about 60 degrees and then lands on top of a table. Very well, but this is your choice to live in an adequacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
my god! I'm keeping it for sentimental value. I'm not gonna wear it again. Ugh, emotions. You watch as Nine gets up, throws the wine glass into the, the forge fire. It explodes <laughs> in a mini explosion, and she walks over and opens a chest and pulls out a absolutely exquisite dragon leather jacket with dragon cufflinks, metal brass cufflinks, a collar with a cufflink as well, and a chain coming down. She brings it over to you folded. Don, your new outfit. But I, Don! <laughs> All right. Well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on. Okay. It's a perfect fit. It is actually frightening how well it fits. The buttons are all aligned. Everything is like completely stitched perfectly. It's almost mechanical in, it, in its nature. Express your comfort. <laughs> I feel really, I feel really uncomfortable around you. I feel. I was not speaking to you, do one you, with no style. Do you have clothing? <laughs> do you sell clothing here? You <laughs> keep going. Answer. I feel like I'm dressed to the nines. Excellent. You know our slogan. That does not get you a discount. Shit. Uh, that is a jacket of acid resistance. So you are now resistant Ooh, to acid. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. Uh, how how long is the jacket? Uh, how long did you want it to be? Um. Probably like, going past my butt, maybe. All right, yeah, it goes about like right above the knee a little bit, like halfway up the knee. Okay, silly question, by the way. Uh, is there just any like just general use stuff, in general use jackets there? No, it is like okay. bolts of fabric. It's like a it's like a custom place, like a tailor shop. It's not like a like a clothing shop. Forky's like just looking at panic, kind of like oh, she looks really cool. Damn it! And Forky looks down because nine really got him there. Shit. You, I can feel your jealousy running through my runic components. <laughs> what, what were you if talking only about? I could what? one day be this fierce. <laughs> what are you talking about? I am talking about your feeling of inadequacy, mm. your lack of winter attire, your frankly, and she kind of flicks your chest, brave yet pathetic appearance. It makes just. Watch what you say, you might be rude accidentally. <laughs> come on, come on, Borky. <laughs> Borky, you're practically green with it. <laughs> Borky's right in the face. I can see you. Bear. You would look excellent in bear fur. A bear fur cape, one resting on your shoulder. Perhaps even a cowl. Hmm. Oh, well, do I want that panic? Do I want a cowl? I think you'd look great in the cowl, big guy. Okay, um, I... yes. Excellent. Get me a bear. Shit, so Tash, task. Tash, do we have any of that left? <laughs> no, Forky, we don't. Damn it. Okay. Well, I'll hit you up when I kill something. Excellent. Any other large animal may do. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Tash, did you want that that thing you got last time? You. The short one. Tash steps forward. T-pose. <laughs> Damn. Money, no. <laughs> ah, very well. All right. The moment you both your arms go up, it's like a flash and you are wearing a new garment. You are wearing a large, almost cape-like um, robe. It is sheepskin on the inside. So it's like got nice, soft, like sheep's wool inside of it. Um, it goes around the entire collar. Uh, there's a hood that comes up and actually perfectly, there's even a hook that latches to your helmet. So you can actually like bring up the hood. It's kind of got this front sort of uh, beak kind of piece of fabric to it. You just literally attach that to your helmet so it stays on. Um, there's also holes as well where the helmets, like, embellishments can come through. Uh, Excellent. The top part is kind of like a nice leather set, almost almost like splinted armor in a way, but it is leather armor. 
uh, that runs down also has some insulation to it. It does come with a set of pants. Um, they are actually kind of baggy, they're red, uh, with kind of like a red green sort of stripe pattern to them, which lead down to a set of leather, it looks like boots essentially, but your, your two of your nails kind of come out. So you actually do have some traction with your, with your cobalt nails. Uh, but it's kind of like a weird sandal slip, like sandal slipper kind of combo. It's warm. It's definitely warm. Um, and yeah. As long as it's insulated, they're going on everything. It's warm. Yeah, it's super, super warm. Excellent. And then for your four-legged companion, and she brings out like a like a parcel to you, because um, Taurus is not there. Yeah. I gift wrapped it for you. Thank you very much. Your efforts are excellent. They're just fantastic. They are perfect. Yes, very well. They are perfect. Hmm. You can see like some of like the runes kind of glow, like almost, almost to be like, ha oh, yeah. Like, almost yeah. like blushing, blushing in a way. I made the robot blush. I made Edna Mode robot blush. Yeah. During what else do you demand of me? During this whole time, Greckles has just been unimpressively just looking at the fabric and like thumbing through it. Uh, I personally don't feel we have any more need of your services as of right now, but you, your, your work will most likely be used in the future. If you bring back any material, I will use it. Just be sure to bring back, and she turns to Borky. Enough. Good to know. Thank you. She was talking to me, Tarsk. <laughs> uh, immediately, Nines kind of like, goes over and begins to, like, goes over to the rolls of fabric and looks down to you, Greg, and goes, move. <laughs> you just have no luck with robots, do you, bird? No, apparently I don't. It's hard to find some with good tastes. Just Greckles walks out the door. Oh. Those, are, those are bold words from a dusty old feather boa trapped oh. in the back of my closet. Ah! Uh, please tell me, Bort, he's at the door and he stops. Wow, did it just get colder in here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, it did. And I'm wearing the sheepskin. <laughs> All right, you if guys you, head out? Yeah. Oh, if you, if you think I care that much about my appearance, then you are sorely, sorely mistaken. Don't start a fight. You can't finish. You're zero for zero for two. Oh, you're already. one to talk. Uh, after yes, I, yes, I am. Borky grabs him by the hand and walks out. No, uh, Greckles doesn't let you. No, uh, Greckles is Greckles is angry at you, son. Borky, hey, strength check. I'll strength check you then, man. I will dodge out the way. Acrobatics versus athletics. Go ahead for your shenanigans. I would not, I would not let you get close. 16, athletics. 24. Yeah, he's got you in a headlock, Greckles. You're being dragged away. <laughs> okay. Let's right. get log, children. <laughs> I love you, Goomba. Right. Well, uh, before sure, we do that, can I, can I pick? Water. Is, my, <laughs> is my pick ready? Your what? My pick. Oh, with Weimar? Yeah. Uh, you want to visit him? Yeah. Uh, just real quick. Yeah, yeah. If we're closer to that, then we may as well. Yeah, he's because just down the road. Yeah, he's just down the road from Nines. That's He pointed you in the direction of Nines because it was close. Oh, excellent. Okay, so yeah, let's just go get the uh, axes and the pick. Oh, wait, no, the axes aren't going to okay. be done, right? Uh, You don't know. You can go in and check, though. Okay, well, let's go pick up that pick, then. All okay. right, you open up the door. Immediately, you see Weimar, and he kind of stands up. He goes, oh, hey, you're here. Excellent. Uh, I got two things done for you. Actually, three, technically. Oh, yay! Um, Borky, I got let's one go. of these. Borky, let's go he... of Borky, let's go of Crackles. Finally, I would <laughs> still be making checks that way if we were go if we were gonna walk down the road. I'm just imagining you're like you're. I just imagined while I was dragging you in a headlock, you were just pretty much doing uh, uh, uh G, no, G, I G mod be... flailing. No, no, he'd be reaching for the knife, contemplating. <laughs> okay. Uh, Weimar sets down a, a, what looks like kind of like a, um, a ring box. He sets that down. Uh, he also sets down a gorgeous hand axe. Uh, it is made out of the dragon's claws, and the front part, the actual bladed part of the axe, is made with the dragon's claw. It's been, like, filed down to actually be a sharp edge. So, like, mm. the curl of the claw is the front of the axe, and then there's, like, a wooden part, and it's, like, attached where the claw would basically meet the actual, um cartilage or what what have you of the actual paw of the dragon okay mm -hmm. uh, 
and it's gorgeous. It's like, it's like an ivory white, almost, um, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so that's done. And then he puts down an arrow as well. Um, Ooh. yeah. So he kind of like dusts his hands off. He goes, uh, first of all, there's this. And he opens up the, the ring box to show a, uh, to show the pick. Um, it is a oh. perfect, like almost, um, obsidian black dragon scale pick. Um, it has the initials in it and it even it seems to have some sort of like not real gold, but some sort of kind of like semi-precious. Um, so fool's gold. Fool's gold, yeah, yeah. Like, like some sort of pseudo gold uh, in the signature of it. And he kind of just like gently pushes that towards you because it's very, very nice. Uh, he <sighs> pushes the uh, the axe towards Ooh. you, Borky. I'm gonna give and... it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give my guitar a little test strum. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. That's really oh, yeah, good. That's good. Borky just holds the axe in his hand. How's this go? Oh, panic. It sounds beautiful. How's it feel? Is it special in any way? You don't know. Mm. Feels good in the hand, though. Oh, this. I can use this. <laughs> Borky. Hearing them be, hearing all of his allies get excited, you see like a proud, like almost father as smirk on Task's face. Ooh. So it was the oh, other axe is pretty sexy, Borky. Yeah, yo, just look. Is, so Borky's just holding. How big does the axe look in his hand? It's pretty light. It's pretty small. It's about the size of like a moderate hatchet. Okay, so it's like if it's hooked, that means like Borky can pretty much just punch with it, pretty much. No. Okay. <clears throat> is it specifically for throwing like function, like speaking it is, functionality? So it it is like a small hand axe. It is a throwable hand it's axe. A, it's a hatchet. It's pretty. Yeah. Hard, but is it right? is it is it is it possible to just melee with it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's a light weapon. Ooh. So you absolutely can. Borky's just nodding at it. This is great. Oh, and what? it's very light, too. Dang. Perfect. Borky's kind of flipping it in the air a couple times. Oh, and Borky reaches into his bag of holding because he remembers something. Borky pulls up the, gob the skull goblet and just sets it down there. Just don't touch that. And Borky pulls out the hellhound core. Oh. This is a hellhound core. Okay. Dude, Please you... keep that away from my children. No, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. They might like it, but what I'm thinking is, what do you do with a hellhound core? You find a wizard or a mage who knows what to do with the hellhound core. I deal in natural <laughs> materials, not magical, yeah. I'm afraid. Okay, thank Borky, you. This, this would be a willow thing. Okay, no worries. Bor Borky puts oh. the hellhound core back and grabs the skull goblet. Oh, this skull goblet? You're wondering what it's for? Let me tell you. <laughs> he like pushes you away um, and he looks to you, Task, and goes, and uh, this is a prototype, so let me know how this works for you. And he hands you an arrow, uh, Task. Oh, thank you. It's very, it has a very, very large arrowhead. It's a dragon spine. It looks like it's been like almost curved to a point. It's almost like a, like a weird giant lance in a way. Ooh. Um, just give that a try. Tell me how it works, and I'll work on the other ones for you. Very well. Anything particular I should know about when hunting things? Um, uh, durability is more the concern. These are pretty brittle. Um, and uh, maybe maybe don't eat what you shoot with this, just in case. Uh, out of character, really quick. What was the commission time for the dagger? I couldn't remember if that was like one or two weeks. Uh, it's gonna be a couple of weeks. Uh, okay. He got one axe done. He got an arrow done, which was a miracle. Um, and then the pick he did it like in like twenty minutes. Like gotcha. Minutes. Uh, uh, silly quick. Now for the axe, real fast. Sorry, we're going over all of our equipment real fast here, guys. Uh, the axe I added to my inventory. I will throw one into your inventory right now. Okay, cool. Uh, is there anything? Is it just, it's just a really? It's just a throwing axe, right? It's just a really, really nice throwing axe. Yeah. Got it. Okay. This guy, this guy doesn't really make like magical items. He can make items that kind of have a, a naturalist effect, like acid or like that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, or poison. Gotcha. But uh, beyond that, he doesn't quite do certain things. All good. Uh, okay, Monty. There is one more thing. Like now, now that now that talk actually just reminded me. I do actually want to run back to nines. Uh -oh. Do I? I, 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 I wondered why you no sold it when I mentioned the, the helmet. Yeah. The helmet. Well, wouldn't you want to talk to him because he's the armor? Ah, Jesus. Who do you talk to about that? Will, yeah. Probably Willow, honestly. Yeah. About the, about the uh, crown? 
making yeah. it making it a helm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It is okay. magical. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. It is a magical item technically. So. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's one axe, um, and you have one of the arrows. He has enough material to attempt to make two more. Um, I mean, natural twenty maybe should have made two, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Um, that was for time completion. Sorry, I'm just looking at my my literally my people who are making you things book. That's all good. Oh my god. All right. This is such a great game. <laughs> yeah. All right, Weimar. Weimar kind of like sits back and goes, "All right, well that's all I got for you so far. Uh, if you want to give me some more time, probably get the rest of." This. Honestly, if you just wait a week, like everything should be done. That should well. be fine. Yeah. Um. I just mean, you guys are the only people who really hire me, so. That's unfortunate. Should we advertise for you? No, this is a hobby. This is, I got two kids and a wife. This is a hobby. So, you know. If you, if you ever change your mind and make this into an establishment, then please let us know. Hey, guys. Maybe once the kids get older, but, um, I, think, I mean. I think this is his escape from his kids and wife. Or keys. I love, I love uh, my wife. I love, I love my wife. She's great. Oh, the kids, the kids are good, but they're they're napping upstairs. Um, but they're a handful, you know. Takes a village. Hmm. Very well. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, no problem. And like I said, give me a week. You can pop in if you like. It's just you know, faster if you just give me. Well, a week. if I shoot something within that week, I'll let you know how the results are. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Have Take a care. good one. You guys set out back out into the snowy streets. I All right, can't let's go. identify it on my pick to see if it has any mystical properties. The pick itself is resistant to acid, so it won't Ooh. melt an acid, but beyond well, that, that's good. nothing else. It's an acid pick lock. Lock pick. <laughs> Words. More like, more like a screwdriver. You can't really pick a lock with something flat and wide like that. Not but... with that attitude, with a well-placed 20. Anything's possible. Fair enough. That's the unfortunate <laughs> aspect of this game. All right, where are we heading? <laughs> We're going to go pick up our idiot robot son. Oh, yeah, idiot robot son. All right, you guys head to the, the clergy district. Um, you see many, like, kind of priests and whatnot kind of shoveling off snow, uh, kind of knocking icicles that have already formed um, on different parts of, like, the, the awnings and things like that. Uh, as you walk, uh, all of you can roll a perception check if you'd like. Oh, absolutely. All righty. Okay. 13. Oh, 12. Perception. 13. Here I go. 12. 12. It's a Jeez. 12 and 13 day, but hey, a 13 I think is going to pass uh, because she's kind of standing out in the open. You see Helena currently like shoveling off the front steps of the Oren Temple. Um, the one you've passed by before where the, the priest was kind of like, hello. Um, she's just kind of shoveling snow. Hi, Hannah. No. Oh. Oh. Hi. She kind of waves. Uh, then she kind of like notices you, Panna, kind of waves to you a little bit more seriously because she knows you a bit better. Hey, how's it going? It's cold. <laughs> yeah, crazy weather we're having, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's nuts. Um, we have it's to do winter. a few. Yeah, well, winter is a busy time of year for Oren temples, usually. I mean, this one, not so much. Um, so we're doing some you know, sermons, things like that. Uh, but check out Panic's fetch new outfit. That, that's a nice M- jacket. Model it for us, model it for us, Panic. Uh, Panic starts voguing. Yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Casting digitation to make like spotlights around him and shit. Well, Helena does kind of that wide gate, like smile, like, mm-hmm, that's, that's nice, son. Like, that's sort of <laughs> like, she's like, that's cool. That's, that's really cool. I think Zarv would love a jacket like that. Oh, have you seen him again? No, no, no. I just, you know, I've seen his music, so. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I still need to get in touch with that guy. I just can't figure out how. I, I, if he's performing, I'll let you know. That would be great. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyway, I got to get back to work. Yeah. Uh, and if you see Captain Doros, um, tell him I'll be late for work tomorrow, but don't worry, I'll send a bird if not. All right. Uh, uh, before we go, actually, uh, I'm going to run up to Helena. Uh, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I'm going to get real quiet next to her. She um, looks nervous, like, okay. I, I heard what you said in the sewers about how you didn't think you were attractive anymore. I mean... I mean, half of me is, I guess. And, uh, 
I just I feel really shitty about that. So, she like puts her hand over your mouth. No, I I I I, Look, I block it's her. Fine. From doing it's fine. It's panic. It's fine. It's fine. no. I mean, you did something nice for me, so I want to do something nice for you. And uh, panic pulls out his uh, ticket to the Romantian. Here's a free pass for a spa day for you. Uh, she takes it. Um, I'm, I don't know this place. Where is this? Uh, it was Middle Entertainment District, I think. Oh. If, if you have the pass, I'll let you in. You don't need to do this. It's fine. No, I don't. But I am. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of smiles and pockets it. Treat yourself. Treat yeah, your trying to. Self. Doros and Welch got me ice cream after the mission. Oh, you, tr you deserved it. Whew. Man, yeah, what a that crazy. Is... I almost died. That thing. Yeah. I mean, if... uh, <laughs> that was, that was... But she puts to Borky, like, if he didn't kill it, I was probably dead. Yeah, that yeah was... Borky got stabbed with his crown horn thing. That was that nuts. Was... Yeah, that was crazy. Mm -hmm. Tass is going to wear that as, like, a helmet, I think, actually. That's it's true. That's impressive. Mm. Anyway, I should let you go and um, yeah, thanks. Just, yeah, just, I, I've been to the Romantian before. Spa treatment. Mm. You'll feel like a million bucks. You'll look like a million bucks. Just... Treat yourself. Treat yourself, yes. <laughs> okay. I will try. All right. Uh, once I get done shoveling all of the snow in the world, apparently, she goes back to kind of shoveling. All right. You leave? Yeah. We walk okay. Inside. You go down, boop, 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 go down the steps. Uh, eventually, you kind of you go through, you see the various different temples, you see Uspa, and Actually, all the Uspin clerics are just like, yeah, snow! They're all like, throwing snow at each other. Making and, like, snow make, angels. They're making snow asimars and all kinds of things. Most of them are dwarves. Uh, a few humans. A couple of elves are just like, ugh, like, come on. <laughs> oh, um, fun in oh. my presence. <laughs> um, the other temples, Illine and whatnot, you, you do see as well. Um, the Hoketh one is closed. It's actually like barred up at the moment. Um, there's no one to be found. There's not even a guard there. Um, and then the other ones are, are fairly busy. The most craziest one is the Uspa one. They're, they are having a field day. Um, sorry, someone said they wanted to look out for something or see something. Oh, I was going to say, can we actually really quickly have a bio break? Yes, absolutely. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, go faster. Okay. Uh, I need to eat some spaghetti. My dinner's right here. Go eat your I spaghetti. Realized, I realized I gave a nun a ticket to a brothel. <laughs> you did? All right, I'm gonna. See. It was for spa treatment. But hey, you know, you know, it's all right. It cost a hell of a lot more than that poster did. <laughs> the poster you gave away. I mean. You gave to Scarble, so now it's in somewhere in between the wall mouse hole, in the various <laughs> mouse holes that Scarbles has made. In a shrine somewhere. There's a fuck. There's a fucking. There's an ant maze in our fucking wooding, in our in the siding of our house. I just imagine like the building goes and you're just like scorbles. <laughs> She's like destroying the foundation. Oh man. God, that could be a colony, dungeon but all for its goblins. Own. <laughs> all right, I'll be right back. Yeah. The scarb holes. Uh, so, Zito, how are you? Can't talk about eating spaghetti. <laughs> Well, I'm, hurry, I'm up doing... and, hurry up and touch on your spaghetti. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I don't, I don't yeah. give a shit what anyone says. Scarbles is like best girl. Scarbles is great. That's why I, I was just like, why are we? This woman needs to be hired. She needs right. to be here. Uh, I can't, I can't wait for something, either tremendously good or tremendously bad, happen between her and Skinny. I feel like she would out like she would out sass circles around Scarbles that Scarbles wouldn't know what to do with herself. Probably, but I mean that'd be a hell of a time to watch. Yeah, just saying. Oh boy. What the, what the hell are we gonna do with the rest of the day slash week? I've got plenty of I don't know. But you know what I am glad? I just realized this, and I hate myself that I realized this. Hmm. I'm happy that we've just transformed Scarbles into our own personal mole from Atlantis. 
<laughs> oh my god. Uh. So, Zito, let's talk about some current events. How did you feel about E3? Uh, in accordance with what happened last year, a very nice surprise. Yeah. Last year's was abysmal. Yeah. This year, I I was half expecting a lot of the shit to be... A lot of the stuff here for this year, I've expected it to be a lot worse. Everything has been a pleasant surprise, except for, you know, EA, because... But... Well, I mean, EA has always been a relative disappointment. Yeah, so I was I was actually happy with Microsoft's um, or not Mike? Yeah, Microsoft's uh, presentation. Presentation, yeah. Sorry, I'm tired. No, no, it's fine. God. Yeah, I I'm not an Xbox person, and even I was just like, huh, there's some decent stuff here. Mm -hmm. And but here's the thing is that I said the one thing that everyone finds controversial that everyone I've told this, uh, that I think Ubisoft did a way better job than Bethesda because. It, I've been gauging this entire E3 based on who the fuck has actual gameplay. That's fair. Uh, real, real quick. Uh, hi guys, I'm back. I do some Hello. bit callouts real quick. If that's cool. Uh, well, is everyone here or? Uh, money's not here yet. I want to thank uh what for. No, I I'm here. Oh, okay. Igor 829, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Rian, uh, Rian Azuka, thank you for 1,000 bits. Arapen, thank you for the 500 bits. Palin and Boris, thank you for the 500 bits. And uh, Dark Lord Popa, thank you for the 2,000 bits, dude. Uh, Simon the Pyro, thank you for the 550 bits. Faded MCEL, thank you for the 500 bits. Zephyrus, thank you for the 1,000 bits. And Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the 12,000 bits. Sully's back. Oh, woo! Alrighty. And also, hydrate yourself. Guys, hold on. I got a giant bottle of spicy water. Have a li let's have a listen here. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Codename Chas, thank you for the 500 bits. All right. You're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm back. All right. Uh, as you guys proceed forward through the, the clergy district, you see all the different temples. Um, a few stand out more than others. There's a few, like, small shrines for some lesser gods. Uh, you do notice one shrine in particular. Uh, is a shrine to uh, actually roll a religion check if anybody wants to try and identify one person Wait, amongst is yourselves. Zito? Oh, well. Oh. Sorry, I didn't hear the. I didn't well, hear the. Well, uh... <laughs> he had to eat his spaghetti. He had to go get his spaghetti. I didn't. I didn't know that that uh, there was a stipulation <laughs> on this roll. So spaghetti. My <laughs> So, you, so Grekels, you're gonna look at it. Okay, we're gonna wait until we're gonna wait until Task comes back. Task we didn't. We wouldn't wait to see if Zito was back. We didn't. No, wait. We, <laughs> I thought he was here. He was talking. I, wow, wow. Uh, we're gonna be uh, like. I heard him in the background. Somebody. I still hear him, him in the background. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just expecting just a, a sound of someone falling and a crunch sound. And, oh fuck my <laughs> spaghetti! In the distance. <laughs> I don't know why, but when you hear someone shout in dismay in the distance after dropping something, it's the funniest thing in comedy for me. It's like, God, I've... I've... What? It's like that one. Remember that? I can't remember. How long ago was that? There was a time. I tripped on my fish's siphon, like my siphon oh, on right. stream. Yeah. And sucks. I <laughs> I fell over. I didn't hurt myself. I actually caught myself in my fall, but it just sounded like I died. And I was like... People are always like, man, you're really clumsy. I'm like, I don't know if I am. I really don't, but... I was so <laughs> worried you actually injured yourself. I was like, are you... No, fine. Is this the first D&D &D injury that's happened on a live stream? Ah! Okay. You need to hang out with my wife more. Oh, man. Does she, does she trip on things? Too she's absolutely... Like, she's the most accidental prone person I've ever met, and it's the cutest goddamn thing ever. Ugh. I got... Oh. Uh. I'm also I'm also notorious for being a a display destroyer. <laughs> that was my 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 uh, name to fame back when I was working at the first pet store. If there was ever if we ever got like a fancy display for an item, I would always be the one to accidentally break it every single time. <laughs> I'm just okay. imagining this perfectly. Like... Wait, Zeno's back. Oh, back. back. Zeno, we totally right. didn't start the game at all without you. We I didn't know I... you were here. We thought you were still here. We kept going. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I said I'll be right back because I wanted to. Just... Scarf down my spaghetti and put it in the sink. Oh, okay. Sorry. Anyway, uh, now back to the game. Um, so, Greckles did the role for the religion. Uh, you see a little shrine, and you recognize the symbol as being for Telentura, which is the god of good luck. Um, 
God, and... this is a crazy pantheon. Can you can you type that out? Talentura? That's been mentioned before. Yeah. But it's yeah. Tal oh, okay, my bad. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, gamblers love Talentura as well That's as like right. betting man, bookers, things like that. Uh, there's like a little little shrine uh, next to what appears to be a temple of Liversia, and um, basically the people have left like various different things, um, flattened, you know, four leaf clovers, a few things of gold. No one's touching it. Um, obviously, oh, leprechauns. What? <laughs> Greckles is Greckles is actually going to put a hundred gold on that. Alrighty. You ding, 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 drop a hundred gold into the bowl, um, and nothing happens. Well, I didn't expect anything to, but you know, uh, a man comes out and says, "Thank you." <laughs> How cool would that be if a tiny person a little, just came a out? A little, a little gnome in green just walks out. Tidy, 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 um, Moving on. <laughs> eventually, you guys make your way to a very familiar uh, holding prison uh you immediately are brought back bum, to memories of bum, bum, bum. <laughs> bum, <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <sighs> slammer sound yeah uh you remember this place in particular it is actually like a underground prison holding place um Did, who would like to go first borky would love to a uh, borky borky's taking <laughs> borky all right borky goes up to the window there's no window. It's oh. like it's like an iron wrought door, and then you open up, and it leads to steps going down into essentially a dark, dark basement prison. <laughs> where is the, where is the concierge to ask about release? As you get down to the bottom of the steps, there is a desk there, and there's currently what appears to be a uh, a human, young man. Hello, young human. I am here to release um the small blue one with the tiny feet, and probably mentioned Oriara a couple times. Oh yeah, okay. I'll go get him. Yeah, he gets yeah. up. Uh, do you have Do you have a, a form of of release? Yes, here you are. I pass it to him. Thank you, Pask. Oh, okay. Places Thank it up. He folds it and he, he opens like a like a folder and he kind of tucks it in. I'll be right back. He gets up off the seat. He leaves, and then after a while, you hear ah, da, 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 like noises <laughs> coming down the hall, and you watch as holding it him by the, the like the cuff of his his um, his robes, I guess. Uh, log is currently dangling in the hands of the man, and he's like, "Hi, hi there. Did you join a gang?" No, I went to jail. And the guy okay. goes, "No, we, we we put you in the drunk tank." And Log goes out. He goes, "I established a pecking order. You were by yourself." We apologize, sir. He's harmless. His protocol is harmless, but he's just a little loud. That's all you have to worry of him. No. Yeah, Log, no. Log, did you find the toughest guy and did you punch him? I did. I punched myself. Okay, good. I'm so proud of our child. <laughs> he puts Log down and Log like walks over to you. He goes, all right, next time, um, if he has a permit of, of preaching, then he can, he can do whatever. We have allocated spots for such things Wait, just to prevent... Where would we get that? Um, you talk to a clergy that he is a part of, and they should be able to write you up it's one. It's like the first one, though. So then that's a cult, and we can't. Oh, this let's, let's, let's hold on, hold on, right, hold, on, right, hold, on, right, hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, not, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying it's a cult. I'm just saying that's that's why you need a the, thing. The, if... the next thing you're saying, me worshiping this porcelain penguin is a cult. For Wait, oh, up. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is exactly what that no, is. No, it's not. Wait, Brody, that's a cult. Didn't Brork say there was a temple to Oriar somewhere in the say, south? All we, all we have to do is go to Bolton. We'll be fine. There is? Yeah, we were actually going to tell you about it when we uh, got you out of jail. <gasps> I should go there right now. No, you should not. You are going to wait. Oh, but that takes forever. It's like when, like, forever all the time. Log, one of the th one of the key things about being a good clergyman is understanding diligence and patience. But you're not a clergyman. How do you know that? Are you a clergyman? <laughs> Borky just points and laughs. <laughs> no, but this city has laws. Uh, this city has law laws, Log, and you have to abide by them if you wish to preach properly. Mm. We can't okay. keep it. We can't keep bailing right. you out of the situation more than once. There might be a time where if this happens again, we can't help you. I can bust myself out of jail, no problem. And the guy like, looks really concerned about that. Like, wait, what? Like, uh, log, like, log, that too is illegal. Oh, 
I'm learning stuff every day. Bo 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 Borky, yes. Borky turns to the guy, do you have a book with the laws? Uh, no, but if you are curious about particular laws, you can consult your local admin temple. If so much running around. Ah, oh, good. Well, let's get Doros to talk so we <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a good hearty laugh, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We left him with Hothrod in the in the in the in the hot springs. Log, we'll have someone talk to you and explain to you the laws of this city. Uh, okay. Okay then. Take my hand. For We're now, leaving. For now, <laughs> you will come back to the tavern with us. Okay. He takes your hand. Do not pick me up. I will not pick you up. Good. Fine then. <laughs> you guys leave. <laughs> the guy, like the, the desk worker, just scratches back and is like, "That's fucking weird." All right, <clears throat> sits back down. All right, just go home then. All right, guys, head back to the heading back to the home home to, to home. the sweat to the sweat Durgans. Yeah, at this point, it's it's kind of getting to to about sundown. Um, well, it's getting cold it's getting, then. It's getting really freezing cold. For those of you who don't have winter attire, it is definitely, uh, definitely shaking. Is Borky's teeth a chattering? Oh yeah, tusks too. Tusk is with us? No, I'm joking. Why are you vibrating? It's because I thought just going bare chest would attract the ladies. So far, it has not worked at all. <gasps> is that like a mating ritual thing? Kind of. Well, what I've learned about getting ladies is that you need to tweet the loudest. What? And also Bork have lovely plumage. Borky just looks at Gre Greckles. Greckles doesn't reciprocate you, any of that. You sure? Or, uh, <laughs> you could, like, be a good hunter. Actually, I drank the spicy tea, so I'm not, I have a, I, yeah, you're I, not cold. You're not cold, actually. No, it's only Greckles who's cold. <laughs> Damn! The, did we did we not get winter attire when we had the change to season two? No, you had Was to that buy not it. The whole point. No, you have to buy it. You got uh. fall attire. Yeah, you got fall. Oh, attire. Oh, that was fall attire. Okay. Yeah. A lot of game mechanics. You gotta keep up. You gotta keep... <laughs> yeah, there's a fundamental uh, difference between jackets and hoodies. <laughs> you guys eventually make. <laughs> You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Um, you make you guys. You make you guys' way back to the, the your guys' tavern. Um, Where is Tarisk? The good boy needs a sweater. He is currently in the doghouse, but this is the moment you see the doghouse, Log takes off running, like squeezes his way into the doghouse, and like Taris kind of shifts to the side, like what's happening, and eventually Taris is kind of kicked out a little bit. <laughs> Taris stands there. I, I I I call him out. He like gallops towards you. All right, I attach him his new clothing. It, it's it's hard to explain what exactly it looks like. It's it's a lot like a like rescue dog attire, almost in a way like medieval rescue dog. It's almost like um. So from know, Dragon Age, the like the the giant fucking like worm dog things that look like they could like eat a fucking Komodo dragon in one bite, like those things with a jacket. With like, sure. a, like a lace jacket, yeah, it, yeah. It's like it's kind of like the mastiff art in the book. Like it's like it's 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 like a really nice like fabric based like insulated sort of like pet jacket essentially. Uh, it goes all the way down the length of his tail with like straps that go underneath, so his chest isn't covered, but the back is covered, um, and his head is covered as well. There's also goggles you can like put down goggles if you want for him. Aww. Yeah, it's very cute. Does he, does he appear like he's in a lot more shape, better shape than he was before? Uh, you assume so. I mean, it's hard to tell with him because he's not really expressive. Because one, cause one eye is looking one way and the yeah. other the other. Yeah, you do notice the icicle hanging off of his lolling tongue kind of melts and falls off. So you assume, yeah, he's good. Okay, that's much better. All right, I'm just well, he can come inside if he wishes. Yeah, he'll he follows you inside. Uh, Louis Strong's working the door um, at the moment. Uh, no other guard, just him. It appears to be the night shift, so. Hey, Louis Strong, how was your day? Cold. Cool. Borky nods and just walks in. <laughs> okay, you walk in. Uh, the moment you open the door, you are met with warm hearth fire, uh, the smell of ale, the smell of fresh cooked roasts and foods and chicken. 
Uh, quite a few patrons. Um, not like absurd amounts. The place isn't packed, but um, you do see quite a decent amount of, of people. Um, there's a couple dwarves from work who are just kind of talking over, you know, a pint of, of ale and uh, there's a few other people who are just kind of eating food. You see Ben, uh, the blacksmith from across the street, currently what appears to be eating dinner with uh, with Big Guy, who is just staring down at a plate of food. How ti- how of, big does know. he look in the tiny chair he's in? Pretty big. It doesn't. He's really. He sits kind of oddly, um, just because of the way he was built. He, he's very minimal in his design, um, but he sits. Uh, he's decently tall. He's probably about like six foot, six foot eight, six foot seven. Around there, he's, he's fairly tall. Um, I'm just gonna find some tavern music. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, and immediately you see Scarlet like, get away! She's like running, Whoa, Jesus. Between guys feet. And she like tosses out food to like three three women who are currently kind of talking. They look kind of like adventurers of their own regard. Um, and she kind of zooms zips in, in and out. Uh, you do see Hasrad currently sitting like an emo kid in the corner with his arms crossed, his, his <laughs> shoulders hunched up, his face all scowly. With Does he have his hood up? up? Please tell he me he has his hood he's up. He's a cobra, so he's always got his hood up. Come on. <laughs> Cass will walk in front of him. Oh, this is a good start. Don't patronize me. Oh, shut up. Have something warm to drink. But you're I our patron. But you're our patron at this place. Do I get free drinks? Does he? Hold on, hold he on. Gets, he gets one for employment. One. Yeah, that'll do. One per day. One per day. One per day. One a day. Yeah, one a day sounds uh, good. Scarbles, Scarbles, get him something warm to drink. Ah, it's what? She zooms up. My God, like between the legs. <laughs> Greckles actually goes to sit down next to him. Don't sit down to me. No, no, don't go in. <laughs> Greckles then ahead. holds up two hundred gold. Are you sure? Go on. <laughs> Just thought I would get you something a little extra to drink. Seems like you need it. Was my information useful? It was useful, and you have my gratitude for that, for what that may or may not be worth. Eh, I'll take it. Good deal. Stands it over. <sighs> he uh, leans back. Bork, Borky goes up uh, pretty much while, while they're doing that. Borky's going to go up to the front and, like, pull out his 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 hag, hag goblet and, like... Just motioned it to Helga. Please fill it with booze. You don't say that out loud. No, he well while they're while they're having a conversation, that's what he's doing. There are words that should be coming out of your mouth right now. Mm, please, please, can I have alcohol? Good, you're learning. She like pours some alcohol into you wor- it. You work for us. Oh, boy, he walks away. <laughs> Hel- Helga, uh, we were told that you were a little under the weather. You do know she has rings on her eyes. Just- I am good enough to work for now. Just really tired. I would like you to tomorrow find the nearest cleric and get your checked. Why? This has been happening with Vel, too. I'm afraid that we might all be succumbing to some kind of illness. <sighs> but that means the tavern will be closed tomorrow. Then, can... so be, uh, then so be it. Well, we could run the tavern, right? You do not have a license. But we own it. I just don't get laws. <laughs> Helga... We can close down for one singular day. Your health is way more important than that. All right, if this is what you would like, very well. Hey, it's it's better to uh, it's better for it to be closed down for one day than to have it be closed down for like a week because they're ill or something. Eh. <laughs> she just looks really like <clears throat> about the whole thing. Well, cool, she yeah. kind of nods, like, "All right, fine." Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do another I'm gonna do another check again to see if. See if maybe uh, they can figure out what what the hell is going on right now. Medicine. Medicine. <laughs> that is a twenty. Nice. Modified twenty. Um, looking at the symptoms, I mean, like when the seasons Heart. change, colds happen. Um, you get the sense from her it's a lack of sleep. Uh, Vel was similar. <clears throat> Probably just restless sleep. Hmm. Have you been having nightmares? No. Okay. The only Please. nightmare I have is when I wake up and I see you. <laughs> Ooh, Sparky just sits there sipping. That's fair. 
<laughs> Porky thinks what all um, all his shenanigans. What is uh what is Lewis Drug is speaking of people who are out in the out on injury leave or I suppose. He is out guarding the front door. You mean Nara you mean Naragan? No, Lewis oh. Drug. Oh we walked past him when we came in. Yeah, we walked past him when we came in, dude. Yeah, he's out oh. there. He's he's out there standing guard. Actually Bor Borky kinda looks at when Panic says it and like kind of like Motion for them to join him, kind of like at a table. Just is there a table for just the four of them to talk real fast? Yeah, absolutely. There's one in the corner next to Zully's stained glass. All right, so Borky's like, "Hey guys, come, come with me. It's not a jape. Come." And Borky just gestures and like sits down at the table. Okay. So when we was out adventuring, when we was getting the orb, we came across everything that we saw was Louis Strong, and we haven't said anything to him. Now. I know sometimes I do dumb things, but I have a feeling right now that maybe it's connected because he's like a magical being or just got no head. I don't know how it works. I don't know magic. But like, first Vale didn't feel good, and now Helga. The thing is, they felt fine until we hired Louis Stroll. So I just feel like maybe we should be open to the idea that Louis Stroll is... I mean, we don't want to confront him, because, like, how do you confront, hey, is that head really yours, or did you get it from someone else? Like, how do you how do you do that? Right, but I just, you know what I'm going for right now? Do you, am I just, do I sound... You're asking... No, I, I, I had the same idea, actually. Okay, because I feel like what I'm pitching sounds crazy. Or we could be haunted. That's my two options. Well, he did tell us that he has amnesia. Yeah. Here's here's something I would suggest though. If we are gonna have this discussion with him, do you not think it'd be wise to have Edward as well under counsel? I don't think he'll be able to be available for something like this. If we send a pseudo dragon, we can at least attempt. No. Don't How about we talk to Louis? Either. If we talk to Louis Stroll first, and if it doesn't go well, then we talk to then we talk to the, the, the hot dad. I already sent uh, I already sent that word a letter and uh, got rejected. Oh damn! That must uh, that must be weird to have it happen to you. Well, in that case, then if we're not going to be able to have his counsel, then I suppose there's no harm in us explaining to him when he has a free moment. Yeah. He deserves to at least know what we found. Should we like wait for Narragan to get back before we do that? We're gonna need someone out in guard. So yes, we. The, but the the, oh, the moment hold, 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 that hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not good with situations like that. Like I could sit there, you could fill me in. I could just stand guard outside, if need be. I mean, if this is, if our friends are getting sick, like I'm willing to step out for it. Come on, guys. You know me. I'm not the best. <laughs> so you would rather stand guard while we have this discussion with him? Yeah, you just fill me in. I feel like I would just take away from the situation. Okay, I'll just say it. I feel bad for what I said earlier. You know, sometimes I'm just in a moment. I just, I have a thought that comes to my head, and I just feel like asking it because maybe that's why he's angry all the time because Bro can't well, find love because he's busy. It's just a well, thought. Borky, sometimes you have to tell yourself, be gone, thought. Oh, negative thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> By Monty, the way, Monty will remember this. <laughs> while, while, while I'm chilling out with uh, Hasra, does he say much? No, he doesn't say anything. He just keeps giving you this glance like, go away. Go away. <laughs> he really wants to be alone. <laughs> he does not want to be social at all. Just come on, just come on. Let's just hold hands. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> all right, well, Borky, here's the thing. Yeah. Just be prepared that you might be pulling guard duty for quite some time, considering that however he takes no, we, this information, we could, if it goes south, we we're could, going to need we, you to temp in. We could alternate. I'm saying for the conversation, we could alternate. If need be, we could just ask the new lady we hired and uh, Orc, Ohm, that guy, he could just sub in for a while. He's, we didn't. We didn't hire him. I know no, we did. I know we didn't hire him, but we hired her so she can get in contact with him. There's always a workaround. <laughs> uh, very well. 
Do you, uh, looks to panic. Do you think we should just get this over with now? I think now's the time, yes. Get Greckles. Because I think he's Very trying well. to, I think he's trying to, like, hold hands with Hoss right over there. I don't know what's going on over there. Forky gets up. Want me to go tell him to come inside? They're just yeah. kind of sitting there. <clears throat> I've just imagined the corner, just the two of them s sitting right beside each other. <laughs> drinking, <Stop>. speechless. <laughs> Pretty much. Hosrod is just scowling. He looks so like uncomfortable. Like he's just like, like he's in this constant state of disgust. Not towards Greckles, but just towards the entire situation. There's hey, people... I mean, you had you had a decent idea. It's not like I wanted to be around a whole bunch of people right now, anyway. What? What do you mean what? I don't want to be around people. I'm actually following your. Then why your are you around me? Because because <laughs> you're not. Because you're not saying anything, huh, bud. Borky, then why not point. just go to a corner? Borky walks over. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, oh God, it gets worse. Hey, oh. hey, it's come on, Greggles. Uh, Task and Panic want to talk to you about something important. Greggles just walks. Greggles just walks past Borky. He, he's mad at me, uh, because I made a scene at a coffee shop. It's it happens. Borky walks outside. All right, guys, what's going on? We're going to explain things to uh, to Louis Strog. We figured you'd want to sit in on this. Borky's going to take over guard duty while we talk about this. Uh, should we get maybe town guardsmen, maybe some extra muscle in on this? You have no idea how he's going to respond. Well, we don't, but he deserves to know. And if it comes to this, the worst he can do is run out into the street or we take him or we, we push him out. Is it, though? Look, when I first got a good glance at him, he wasn't human. Heck, I don't even know if he's mortal. And now we know he, we're, we're even less sure about what in the world he is. I'm just saying maybe it'd be good to take a few extra precautions. I will... All right, hold on. I will walk over to Helga. Helga? No. Nah. <laughs> we have to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Louis Strog. Uh, we don't know how he's going to take it. Just have everyone in the just have everyone in this tavern ready with an arm if something goes wrong. I mean, we do have to... we, we do have waffles. Are you like hey. going to like ask him out on the date or something? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Olga. Just just know that we are not certain how this. Uh, how this conversation will go as a precautionary measure to make sure that everyone's safe. Hold on to a weapon. I mean, we always have, have my weapon here. Like we, do have, we do have waffle. I just snap, snap a finger and say, waffle. <laughs> the owlbear forms, and I mean, like, people are like, oh, oh my god! Like, people it, kind of panic. Begin ladies and tower. gentlemen, settle down. This is the second mascot of the sweet dragon, Waffle, everybody. <laughs> like a little kid who's sitting with their parents, like, yeah! And they're like, the parents like kind of bring down her hands, like, don't clap, honey, don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> so the owlbear just kind of stands there. It's, it's, it's like front paw claws are kind of like slack. No. <laughs> Waffle, wait upstairs, please. No. <laughs> it lumbers to like the... <laughs> To the I was hoping stairs. you were gonna do. I was hoping you were gonna say waffles. Go sit next to Hasra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he stands over at the, at the bottom of the stairs, uh, just because that's as far as he can go. Uh, oh, his he's... perimeter is the floor. Um, he can't actually go to the second floor. Ah, uh, okay. He's bottom. a good boy, ladies and gentlemen. Little girl like starts clapping again, and her mother's Ooh. like, "Sarah, don't." Like, just stops her. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I just make sure he's out of the sight. All right, yeah, he's he's gone. Okay, so can Borky's kind of outside now. So do you want to do the Borky conversation real fast? Here, Borky, yeah, go for it. Hey, uh, Borky opens up the door, turns to Louis Strog. Hey, Louis Strog, do you got a second? Um, yes, but if I leave, I will leave the front door unguarded. Oh uh, yeah, no, no, that's okay. It's actually. Brings me to what I want to talk about real fast. Actually, do guys want to talk to you about something? Like, we all do, but again, someone needs to guard the door, so, you know, because I'm the big guy. I'm going to do uh, that. So if you want to just... You. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to just go in and find Task, uh, Grackles, and uh, Panic, that'd be great. Thanks, man. Yeah. Very well. Yeah, Grackles is kind of in a mood, so I, I understand. 
he uh he goes he steps past you and yeah. goes inside hey dog hi he's like screams from the side of the uh, the dog house <laughs> cool this is gonna be a fun night <laughs> okay there we go all right uh lewis straw kind of comes and he kind of shakes the he's got kind of like a like a cape to himself he kind of shakes all the snow off and like kind of scans the room notices you guys kind of sitting in the corner next to the window and he steps over yep, just motion him over lewis straw please take a seat is this about my employment? No, it is not. Uh, it is actually something we, we just wish to discuss with you, something interesting that we feel might involve you in some way that we found on our travels. Is this a private matter? Yes. We be- yes, we believe yeah. so. Would a private location be more appropriate? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's go to your room. Very well. He starts moving towards his room. Uh, he opens the door and he sits down in a chair. Uh, there's like a chair, a bed, a wash basin, and that's and a chamber pot. That's it. Chamber pot's empty. Uh, same surprise, as wash surprise. Surprise, surprise. Uh, he sits down in the chair and he just kind of waits. All right. Well, Panic, this is your show. What? Okay. You have you have better stats for this than we do. <laughs> real. Yes, I do. My charisma is five. <laughs> uh, well, Louis Strong. Uh, we in our travels outside of Alabast, we came across an old battlefield. I look. At, I look at him to see his reaction. You don't see his face, so there's no reaction. It's just a helmet. <laughs> well, it's just body a helmet. language. Uh, he doesn't shift at all. He doesn't even really move. And well, on this battlefield, there were a lot of, you know, spirits and uh, lots of things to do with the ethereal realm, the supernatural, and stuff like that. You were gone during Hokes Harrowing, were you not? It was close, yes. I see. And, well, during the battle, um, we were given a glimpse into the far, far past. And you were there. Not quite you, but they were called Lewis Drog. Slowly, Lewis Drog stands up. Lewis Drog was my king in my past life. In my past life, I was Siduri. Did you see me as Siduri? Yes. Do you want your answer? I believe we are old one. I know you can cast spells. You can cast magic, can you not? Yes. I'm terrified of people like you. It's not the first time I've heard that. He's going to hate the other guard. Blue Star reaches out to grab your hand. Not like quickly, it's slowly. Insight. Okay. Disadvantage, you can't see his face. Seven. You have no idea what he's doing. You have not a clue. Can we insight being in the same room? Yeah. All right, with disadvantage. Disadvantage, because you can't see his face. Shit, yeah, no. God I can't, damn it. Can't read this man. Mm, you can't nine read him. Seven. Yeah, nine, he's such seven. an he's such an enigma. He is. Well, I I feel obliged since this is probably sort of sort of not great for his psyche at the moment. I I, I let him grab me. Greckles is actually though going to hold an action to attack if he gets aggressive for any reason. Okay. I I'm going take... to going to You're going to what, sorry? I'm going to hold my hand out to Greckles just just sort of like a hold on. Lewis Drog takes your hand. By the wrist, 
brings it up to the helmet. He presses your fingers to the helmet. It's cold and you're inside. It's very cold. Cast identify. I cast identify. Go under items. Oh. Oh shit. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to make it available to you so you can read it out loud if you want to. As you do this, you, you get a, a, a flash. It just happens in an instant where you see an expanse of darkness and a white figure, a humanoid figure, that kind of is hunched over as if sick. Slowly it turns to you and that happens just for a moment and then you get all this information. Okay. So what, if you want to read it out loud, you what's can. The name, what's the name of it under items? Uh, under items, it's called the Helm of a Thousand Hearts. That's so metal! That's so metal! Okay. The Helm of a Thousand Hearts. Item type, Legendary Helmet. Requires attunement, which is immediate. A helm passed down in history, said to have been forged before the birth of mortal men. The Helm of One Thousand Hearts contains a dominating soul. Each time a humanoid dons the Helm of a Thousand Hearts, the soul trapped within the helm takes hold of the wearer's body. The Helm's conscience can remember only their most recent prior life that they've experienced through possessing their previous victim, but no lives beyond that. In that sense, the Helm of a Thousand Hearts constantly forgets their past lives, and each history with their new wearer, it takes over. Often found in the graves of kings or dragons' treasures, the Helm of a Thousand Hearts finds its way back into consciousness by being taken and worn by unsuspecting adventurers, grave robbers, and thieves. The Helm of a Thousand Hearts has no choice in who it possesses and cannot unattune itself to its target. Victims who don the helmet, and victims is very suspicious, and unknowingly attuned to it, must pass a DC 25 charisma saving throw or have their soul forcibly ejected from their body and forced into the ethereal plane. Whoa. Jesus! The helm's God. own consciousness then commands the victim's body to their will. The helm can only be attuned magically by the use of a wish spell. The helm of a thousand hearts and its victim's body do not require food, drink, sleep, or even air. The Helm's host will move and function for a hundred years before being retired, and the Helm will return to its dormant state. If the host body is killed, the Helm unattunes to the corpse. The Helm, while possessing a body, has these additional benefits to itself. The Helm retains the same stats of its victim, but gains a plus three to their wisdom and a plus three to their intelligence. The Helm retains all languages learned from past lives. The Helm has advantage on history checks related to world history and ancient language. Damage immunities include poison, charm, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, stunned, or psychic. Jeez, what the fuck? Glad we got him for a card. Good get. What are we paying him? <laughs> right? Standard rate. Standard rate. <laughs> There's two little things after that, but it's oh, senses yeah, and languages. It's, yeah. yeah, senses and languages, but we already went over that. In the... As you immediately learn all that information, your hands just kind of... He lets go of your wrist and your hands just kind of fingers kind of jolt away from the helmet, the cold, almost trapping you there in a way. It is so cold. It's almost like when you lick a pole, you get stuck to it, but you, you peel back your fingers. Panic, what happened? There's your answer. Panic looks at his hand, like clenches his fingers a little bit to see if they can still move. They're fine. It's a little cold. And then he looks up to Lewistron, or I guess, I guess it would be uh, Siduri. A thousand um, people. 
How many years do you have left? In this body, a hundred. I can't die. I don't wish to mean darkened. I don't have any ill will when I say this. But in that, if that's the case, do you actually wish death? Sometimes. And slowly Lewis Jog turns down to you. Sometimes I do. I'm the only one left of that battlefield. I came and I went and I move forward and the weight on my shoulder is unbearable. What I am, who I was, this is my punishment. Thousands of fleeting lives come and gone to be forgotten over and over again and to forget. Slowly sits back down on the chair. I have three more questions for you, and then we'll let you go. Very what well. is your relation to Edward and Robzo? The city knows what items come into it. It can detect powerful artifacts, artifacts that are world-ending, dangerous, connected to other planes. When I walked through the gates of this place, I was not stopped as you would be. Because in that sense, I am not like you. I'm an item. And as I stumbled through the city, this new city, he approached me and we talked. He wanted to ask me thousands of things and I said no. So he said he would give me time. If there's any respect to the man, he made it my choice. What's your second question? He's kind of like hunched over at this point, his fingers intertwined, kind of slouching forward. He looks kind of ashamed, almost. Do you know what what were the Hellmouths? Hellmouth. No, Ganash. Ganash is a demon. A monster of destruction and consumption. Not for greed's sake, but for end's sake. I don't know the full history. It's hazy it's gone someone brought it here and we stopped it in a sense we saved you i can find peace knowing that ganache is still alive somewhere held at bay i've been told by a different god i believe the little thing that lives in the doghouse knows of it <laughs> the thing in the doghouse. He doesn't know the. F- he doesn't know no, the concept. Just, is. It's just hearing him. This is so intense and enrapturing, and it just sounded so funny. I'm sorry. We ended Hellmouth. That thing served Ganache. The fact that we killed it at all is a miracle. If only surviving was more likely. What's your third question? Do you know what Anima is? He's going to roll knowledge history with advantage. Yay! Bless that item. (laughs) Natural 20. Oh, Oh, yes! I am Nash! I'm going to scroll up in my notes real quick so I can rewrite this. Omnima. So you read through the book. Well, 
red is a strong word. I, I even, even though I'm of infernal nature, I can't understand it, but you, you can. I could. I could. I've read books like that before. Somewhere. I don't remember what they said, but I remember the symbols. Omnima is a devil king. Like Ganesh, but smaller. Does that make sense? Yes. You have things like Orin, god of the sun, and, and Aspa, god of weather, such massive things. But then you have the lesser things. Talentura, the thing the doghouse thing worships. Same goes for devils and demons. There are great destructive things, like an ash, like names are lost on me now. Omnima is a lesser devil king. He rules over the realm of discord. He said to sing in a chorus of death. And that any that hear his voice, their souls were his to devour. That's all the book said, and that's all I remember. Panic is visibly unnerved. I was... During one of our missions in the city, that was strong. The one we were investigating because that man stabbed you yeah that wasn't a good time i'm healed though i'm good no yeah we found out that there was an infernal connection and i met the devil and he called me something he called me a spawn of omnima does that mean? You're not a tiefling. You're a tiefling, are you not? Aren't all tieflings spawns of devils? I suppose so. Perhaps that is your lineage, then. Then... The panic holds his head all of these thoughts racing through his mind, his you can see like the glassy stare in his eye. Crickles grabs him by the shoulder. Panic. It doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is who you are now. And you're my friend. You're you are our friend. You're family. <laughs> my my mother one. Was she? We'll find out. What should they, what did she do to my father? Panic, panic, look at me, look at me. We're going to figure it out. I did okay. not mean to cause you pain. No, I, I needed to know. I wanted to know. Thank you. It's... I have minor questions for you, Louis Strong. Minor. Very well. Now that you've given us these answers, knowing all of what you've just told us, obviously you came here because you answered the call for a job. But why here? Why, uh, apart from the fact that you feel that there's a burden on you, why why did you feel coming to Alavast or finding work or trying to live the life of a normal person? Did I want this life to be over so I can forget the one that came before. I want a quiet, quiet calm place to contemplate and then be done with it. Is there no hope in you finding something new to find joy in? 
New is the repetition. New is good for things like you. I want to cope. And I want to forget. For my sake and for my friends. Then I guess all we can do is try to provide you with that service while you're here. Yes, we can help Louis Strong. You just need to let us. You do as you wish. There's a bit of a bite to that. He stands up. Have you any more questions, or are we done here? Now that you've told us all this, will this change any way you feel of this establishment, the people you work with, and the people you're around? No, but I ask you do not tell anyone else for their sake. Of course not. Edward has promised me enough that people will leave me alone, but... We may come to you in the future because of what that helmet can do, but... I am the helmet. Only if you let it be. Very well. I can't promise everything. Thank you for your time. You may return to your post. Uh, I, actually, out, out of character. Sorry, real fast here. We did need. I, oh, I can't metagame. I'm not in the room. Never mind. You're not in the room. No. Nope. Uh, uh, he uh, leaves. He leaves. And eventually, Borky, as you're standing outside, and 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 log. My nipples are like diamonds. Jesus, it's cold out here. Log, log. At this point, has made a a few very ugly snowmen. Uh, he goes. This is priest number five. And so, this hello, is priest number, number five. Two. Hello, I priest number two. I can't count. Yeah, I can't really either. Like, how many numbers are in a coven? I don't know. I don't even know what a coven is. The only why, but apparently vampires love them. Ooh. Is it a food? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Oh Guess the thing. <laughs> uh, at this oh point, Borky, uh, Louis Strog steps out. And he just kind of looks up to you and goes, move. Okay, then. Have a good day night, Louis Strong. Bye, Log. Good night. Enjoy your slap. <laughs> God damn it. It's like stupid in stereo. <laughs> so Borky, Bor- Borky tromps on in and like, so did you find out why? Did you find out if it was because of Louis Strong that Val and Helga feel sick? No, it's oh. no, it's not. No, we found out. We it's just not him. Oh, or, okay. <sighs> okay, so like, what's up? Is it weird? Uh, yes, um, I can wrap my head around it. I can wrap my head around it. <laughs> well, Borky, um, for the sake of brevity, do yep. you want to just say you explain <laughs> it to him? Uh, okay, okay, well, quick, quick, quick. Basically, the helmet is a lot. Uh, basically, the helmet is a lot of people. It hijacks whoever wears it. Okay, so now if there's a bad guy we hate, we can just like rip his helmet up and put it on him. No. Why not? Because the helmet is attached. But you mentioned he wants to die. So are you saying we kill him and then put the helmet on him? Like how are you in the room, Task? Like how much does he want death? Uh. Cool. There are times where he craves it, but it's not enough to... That's not something even I feel is okay. befitting of him. Okay, Killing 50, him 50. If, if that's the case, then we'll just play it cool. I seriously, he's that strong. Really? And he works for us? Oh, this is great. Also, he doesn't really die. He can't really die. He can just forget. That's basically all he can do. And obviously, you don't tell anyone, right? I don't tell us all. Yeah, no. don't don't tell anybody. Okay, I won't do that. Okay. So that does raise up that does raise up a good point though. Yeah. Like just just the whole death scenario. I know we're not well, like between the four of us. Do you think death is a mercy that should be granted to him, even though he just just for the sake of him being able to escape the mindscape of this body? That would have to be up to him. Yeah, that's up to him. Yeah, yeah. it's really he's cold. 
But we still gotta figure out, though. I mean, this is it's a lot to take in, though. We still gotta figure out what's happening. Why yeah. Val and Helga feel sick, though. Should we get a priest in? Should we get a priest in here to have a look? I, th I think, I think it's just seasonal changes. I, I mean, if it was just Val, it would make sense. But the fact that it's Helga now too, that's what makes me alarmed. Maybe larger creatures are used to certain climates. How are you feeling, Borky? I mean, I had that tea, so still warm inside. But if we need a priest, I know one. He runs a little, he knows that it's a little, he runs a little church. It's really close to us. His name is Log. Y'all joke, not... y'all joke, but he's strong as shit. No, Should we speak I, to I, him that about That might not be a bad idea, actually. Just to see if there is something supernatural going on. Okay, I just, pardon me, and I'm not suggesting that Borky's open the door. Hey, Log, why come inside and talk to everybody? I'll take over for the church. Yeah! <laughs> 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 Hey, Log, I love socializing. Hi, Log. How's how's the church going? It's great, but this big giant dragon keeps coming in and ruining everything. What? I thought we killed him, Task. Oh no, he's blue and he's wearing a sweater. <laughs> Points at Taurus. <laughs> what do you need? Uh, I mean, how do I word this, guys? Guy, sorry, out of character. You guys there? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I was like, I we... log. Uh -huh. What do you What do you know about a creature known as the Omni Moth? Uh, that if if I take apart that word, Omni means a lot, and Ma means mother. So a lot of moms. How many moms? Like five. That's a oh my god, that is that. Tess slams his face in the front uh, on the table. How like, drunk? I mean, but, that, that many. There's but, gonna be so much red wine at play. But if it's ma, as in M A W, then that's a lot of mouths. Yeah, that checks out. Okay, I'm not sure what you guys were expecting. No, I was going. I wanted to bring up uh, log. <sighs> Now you're you're a priest. You're a cleric, correct? <laughs> okay. Now, if we asked you to perform a service to see if there's like something going on that's weird here at the tavern, could you do that? Do you want to get married? <laughs> We'd like you to sense if there's any ill intent spiritually inside the building. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> he walks into the middle of the room, kind of puts his arms on his waist, kind of looks around. Wait, Slug? Is this going to be like a big explosion of light or anything? Cause... No, I'm just, I'm looking for evil. Okay. <laughs> oh, all looks right. Over, looks over at Hasrod. Evil! <laughs> Do you like say that to him? No. Good, because Hasrod would be like, what the, what? No, um, no, I don't say that out loud. That was a SpongeBob log, reference. Log kind of like, literally his head swivels like three, 360 degrees. Like he's going in a full circle, like like a rotating. Hmm, disturbing. Well, it's a construct. <laughs> he comes back, he goes, all right, well, I looked with my eyes, I don't see any evil. I meant more like in a magical sense because like Val, you know Val, the big, the big Goliath. <gasps> yeah, like, big lady. She's not feeling well. I, oh, that's sad. And now Helga's not feeling well, and I don't think like anything could kick her ass. So like, it, it was just Val. I was like, oh, you know, she's just tired. But now that it's Helga, I'm thinking it could be connected. You know? Yeah. You guys realize we're trying to convince an eight-year-old to perform an exorcism? <laughs> well, I just yes. want to know if there's a ghost. At, <laughs> I just want to know if there's a ghost at point. We don't know how old Log is, Grackles. That that was out of character. Why? You should have been in character. <laughs> because Greckles isn't very Greckles isn't happy enough to be this jolly in character. Let me see what I can do in my runic components, and if push comes to shove, I can just talk to Oriara. Okay. Let's see what he can do. <laughs> Let me grab his spells. That sounds like a lot of dice. That was a lot of dice. Just throws marbles all over the floor. Now the ghost will trip on it. <laughs> We're gonna just catch. Like from the first episode, there. Now slip on it. <laughs> God. 
Let's see. We can. Okay, he's got a lot he can do. Uh, nope. Uh, what else can you do? Ooh, can this I'm just imagining his eyes are just like staring forward, like going. Let's yeah, see. he is. He's kind of like, can you hear like a, a processor noise? I was not expecting this. I had to dig this out. Oh, so, oh. Uh, no, that won't help you. Um, he does know that spell, but that's not gonna really, really work. Uh, that's one. No, he doesn't know anything. I don't think he has an ability to. Paladins do, but I don't think clerics do. Okay. That's weird. Clerics don't have detect good and evil? They can detect good and evil, but... Uh, let me see, actually. Let me double check that one. Detect, detect <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you for a loop on this one, Denise. You did, yeah. That's fine. This is Dungeon Master thing. You gotta do that. Uh, oh, okay. Then... I'm back! Huh! Welcome back, log. Get a task back. <laughs> Zito, come back. Did Zito leave? Mm-hmm. Why did oh. he... I don't know why, but he left. Zito! Back. Zito! Zito, Zito come back. Is his mic not working? Or do you step away for a sec? I saw Maybe blood. That's... So... Maybe that's... Oh, he's I... back. He's back. Oh, we thought I... that's... I, I, right. I, said I, had... I said I had to go be our... I didn't hear. I you. can detect if bad stuff is around, but only like a certain distance. Well, could you do it for just the building? Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. He steps in the middle. Uh, he like pushes a dwarf who's like waiting in line to get a drink. He just kind of shoves him away. The dwarf's like, "Hi!" <laughs> and you just hear this. Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. Get down! <laughs> Boo, the car alarm. Uh, no, he stops beeping. His eyes kind of turn back to his regular gaze. He walks over and goes, I have this. I have detected desecrated ground. What? Two. Shit. I think three. I can't huh. count. Wait. I can read, though. What ground? What ground? Panic explain, magic man. Uh, desecrated ground is ground that is desecrated. You know, like, you don't know where. Oh my god. Yeah. What? Where? Where? Yeah, where? Where? Log! Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm not often right. It's, it's, it's new for me. Okay, let me, let me find Detect Good and Evil here real fast. I gotta double check the details of this. That's protection. You guys don't want to be protected. Okay. What did Scarbles do? <laughs> How far did she been... dig? <laughs> She's just been... God. Where? What the heck? I just had it. I She's just... had a fucking mining operation to hell this whole time. Underneath the tap. Oh, I didn't think you guys were getting it. <laughs> All right. She's trying to make a pact with uh, demons. So detect gob and evil. Magically, con yeah, or desecrate. All right, yeah. Follow me. I will take you to the first place. And Log goes down over to uh, the the employees' bedrooms. Okay, we follow. Like, oh, okay, we're following. Uh, he opens up a door uh, that leads into Vel's room. Yep. And Log dramatically walks over, grabs the sheets on the blanket. Rips them off and goes, right here! And he lifts them up and there's nothing there. Really? It's desecrated ground? Yeah! Can we see Panic? Wait, Panic, can you make anything heads or tails of this? Uh... Would I know if detect magic would work on something like this? Uh... Probably not, no. Mm. Uh, actually, maybe, I... yeah. Actually, no, yeah, you would. Alright, uh... I'm going to... Yeah, well, it's almost the end of the day, so I'll, I'll just regular cast Detect Magic. Okay. Uh, you detect your necrotic dan uh, necrotic influences on the bed. Fuck, really? <laughs> Whoa. Whose bed is this? Val's. Val's. Yeah. Val's. It's, like it's like a residue. It's not like a... Uh, it's not like it's there. It's perforating. It's just like a residue. Like a fart. Okay. Uh, so Panic, what is it? This is necrotic energy. Well, I'm pretty sure Val's alive. It doesn't make look of sense. Oh. All right, Log. Borky grabs Log by the shoulders. Log, 
Take a Don't touch shot. me. That no. Okay, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I'm really, I'm really sorry. You, the dog. You, take us to the second one. Okay. Uh, he walks over to Helga's room. Fuck. Okay. And pushes open the door. Uh, She's not in there. Okay. She's serving drinks at the bar. Um, Maybe she could have ducked in there for a minute. <laughs> smoke break. Um, you walk in, messy room. Um, lots of just stuff everywhere, how like ledgers, how many cats? papers. There's a single cat on the bed. Yeah. Uh, and it mean, like, meow, like, jumps off and disappears. And the desecrated ground is, and he grabs the pillow and he throws it. Uh, panic, make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, necrotic pillow. No pillow. Dexterity saving this is throw. what kills him. Yeah. Yeah. 24. Yeah, you manage to duck easily out of the way. It's pretty slow. Yay. Desecrated ground. Points to the bed. Uh, okay. Um, I guess. I mean, I mean, detect magic is still active. It's it's up for like an hour. Yeah, I think. You, you see the same sort of like residue. It's almost like smoke almost in a way. Okay, log, take us to the last one. Okay. Uh, he leaves and he goes up the stairs towards your guys' bedroom. Uh, okay. Well, blood starts draining out of Orky's face. Uh, and he goes up to Willow's door. <gasps> oh no. That's right. She and, else. and he like tries to open. And he's just like, <laughs> one second. Porky knocks on the door. Hey. Uh, is she asleep? Actually, that's a good point. Would she be sleeping? Uh, no, she's not. She's awake. Uh, you hear footsteps. And. Hi. Hey. Oh, hi. Hi, hi, Willow. This is Lauren. Hello. I see some Whitlock. He lives in the doghouse up front. <gasps> Can we come in here real fast and check your bed? Why? Why? Uh, well, health inspection. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we just... A lot of people have been getting sick around here, and we're doing a little uh, investigating on that. Roll a persuasion check. Woohoo! Persuasion check. Ooh, she rolled really high. 18. Not high enough. Bork, Borky looks right at. Okay, can I can I try for persuasion as well? No, no, no. She he passed. Oh. She looks kind of like. She's like, oh, okay, but if, if it's about Doro spending time here, I, I could just tell him not. What? To... No. no listen, this, is, this is detect magic, not a UV light. Yeah, no, oh, sir. So, oh, no, listen, no, we have mechanic. a mil- we have a million questions about the mechanics of it, but now is not the time. <laughs> I think ta- at this point, Task and Greckles are just kind of standing behind them, just Mr. Panic, if slowly. you must look at my bedroom, you may. Okay, thank you, she Willow. She looks really mad. She looks really mad, actually. What? No, th- listen, this is... Long, take me there. Willow? 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 Okay. This is going downhill very fast. Task is going to take a uh, look to Willow. Willow, there's necrotic energy around the building that's been making people sick. We want to make sure your room is not infected as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you guys, was it that hard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. All right, All right so. You go, you go into the bedroom. Um, and log takes the blanket of her, her bed. It's a very, very tiny bedroom, like very small. In fact, only two of you can really fit in there. Um, and he walks over and he grabs the blanket and he throws it off. And he just doesn't say anything, actually. He's quiet. What's wrong? Log, what is it? Do you see it? See what? He looks to panic. Do I see it? You don't see anything. What are you seeing? I thought I... Huh, he scratches his head. Oh, well! He just turns around and leaves. No, 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 log, log, log. What did you see? I don't know, I just felt the same sort of thing that the other places have, but there isn't, so I might have made a mistake. Wait a minute. You used detect good and evil, didn't you? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So would you be detecting good energy? <gasps> she does seem really nice, except yes. for that part where she yelled at you. That wasn't very nice. Well, 
Yeah, Willow's Willow's pretty nice. Can you try? So uh, I'm I'm still detecting good and evil. Uh, so I see nothing. Detect magic is what you're using. You don't. See oh, no, right detect now. magic. Right. Yeah. 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 So I see nothing. Nope. Why? Bork, hold on, Borky stops for a sec. Are you still, Glog, are you still casting Detect Good and Evil? No, I, I stopped doing that. Borky looks at Willow. Can you cast it again? Okay. Boop. Boop. Give him a minute. Boop. Booting He's up. Just, uh, takes, takes a while. I need to blow him out every now and then. Fallout out, shelter Klaxon sounds off. He's percolating it. No, I don't detect anything here. Mm. Okay. Mm. Well, in any case, we do have two confirmed necrotic points, yes? I mean, yay. So I'm I'm detecting everything around me in a 30-foot radius. You don't you don't see any magic. You see tons of magical things because it's Willow's room. Um all kinds of knickknacks, parts. Did it pieces. Mo- did it move? Is there something? Oh. In- Is there something in here? Willow, you said you weren't feeling very well recently, right? Well, I mean, with the Elmer stuff, I've been kind of upset and just, you know. But, but physically, you've been okay. Yeah, I mean, it was cold, so I was a little tired than usual, but nothing out of the ordinary. Fatigue is a common symptom. And Will, last time we met, you were exhausted. Well, I was rudely woken up. Wait, out of character, quick flashback. Was she? Because I thought yeah. she was going it, to bed. It was the snow, like the snowfall, and you guys uh, okay. gallivanting on the roof, amongst other things. Well, uh, I'm just gonna while while detect while detect magic is up. I'm just going to go random places around the house our rooms uh, I, I will uh, go back outside Scarbles yeah. <laughs> what um, so explain to me uh, where how far you've dug into the foundation of our building through those little holes of yours why do you want to know because people are getting sick and we found a cryg energy and we just want and then everyone is okay. She like narrows her eyes at you and goes, I've done dug deep enough. Would any of your tunnels happen to be near uh, Willow's, uh, Vel's, or uh, Helga's room? What? No. I got one that goes to the kitchen. One that goes, oh, you almost got me there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll roll a persuasion. I, I narrow ah. my eyes. I, she goes, ah, you almost got me. I narrow my eyes at her. Sure, her shiny stuff hole. Okay. Damn it, 10. She's got really, really, oh, yeah. That's a 21. I'm sorry, but if you want your own cut of the hoard, you got to work for it. I don't want. God damn it! I, <laughs> I don't. I don't... <laughs> she runs. She starts running. She's ducking through feet and she dives into a hole. You, you to... get back here, or your pay is docked. In 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 the meantime, can I do a thing with panic? Sure. Look, panic. We're gonna be closing down the bar tomorrow anyway. Why don't we just get the clergy in on this? Oh, uh, that's Doros to do it. Uh, I mean, yeah, but the. the beneficial for us to find it. I mean, he did detect it, so... I didn't see anything, and I should be able to detect all magic with this spell as we're, like, we're like, walking around the the entirety of the bar just... Yeah, you guys are just, like, waltzing around. Um, Eventually, as you guys are kind of talking about it, um, do you see a woman run into the, run into the tavern? She's in, like, a, like, a red sort of, like, uh, cloak with, like, a white trim to it. (sighs) Is there is there a panic here? Is there a panic here? I'm looking for a panic room tongue. Have you seen him? And the door's like, hey. uh, that would be me. Uh, the woman turns around. You see Starlight. Oh, hey, Starlight. Oh, hello, Borky. How are you? Hey, oh, you're hey, okay. what, what's going on? Did you not get your invitation? 
I, I didn't have time to check the mail today. Uh, let me go out there right now. No, let's... you don't have time. Scarlett's playing in a rehearsal tonight, and she, she's going to be performing at any moment now. Oh, snap, dude. Oh, um... We sent you an invitation, but it might have been slow with the weather and with everything, so... But I, I came to come get you. She'd be devastated if you don't show up. Okay, um... Uh, how how far how much have I covered with the bar? You've covered the whole thing. You, okay, you know, it's gone. Whatever. Uh, well, I dropped detect magic in that case, yeah, and yeah. I'm like, well, I guess you guys should just just see what's going on. I mean, we've detected it in Helga's room. We've detected it in Val's room. Val's room. Yeah. We'll we'll look into getting some uh, clergymen here to check it out. But yes, in the meantime, you have other obligations. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Well. Uh, lead the way. Of course, we don't want to miss her tuba solo. Very nice to see you, Borky. Oh, uh, very nice to see you as well. Borky bows for no reason. <laughs> uh, Scarlet helps uh, helps you out. She's like, do you have a, you have a, a very nice jacket? Very nice jacket. We should go. It's Thank this you. light. <laughs> Closes the door behind you. And that is off in the distance. Going. Off in the distance, is like, hey, did you know tuba stamp means fart machine? <laughs> Is that oh, is God. that the end as, of this? No, it's not actually. I remember there's something else we have to do. Um, as you guys are kind of standing indoors, you see uh, Meryl actually, who's never working after dark. Um, Meryl is like standing next to Helga, and Helga's just like they're over there. And she's like, oh, okay, perfect, thanks. Hi. Hi. Hey, Meryl. Uh, so um, I have a proposition for you guys. Okay. So my parents are gone. Uh, for a Ginter festival. Okay. It's more like a boring meeting. Mm. Um, we need your help, my brothers and sisters and I. What do you need help with? Well, every year we do sort of this, like, sleigh ride thing, and a tree fell down, and we can't do it. So I was thinking, um, she kind of gets all fidgety. We, if you want, if you could come help us take care of that, we could take you sleigh riding, and there'll be free food, and and um, other fun stuff. Do you have a jacket I can borrow? Yeah, absolutely. I, I even brought one for Mr. Husrad, and she pulls out like this really ugly, like <laughs> farmer's jacket. It's like cracking with dirt. Task slowly looks to Husrad. He's like kind of picking his ear. He's not really like, like he doesn't know what's going on. He's just kind of like, eh. look, I'm just gonna tell him there's free food and he'll probably show up. I mean, that's why. Yeah, that's I, good. That's, that's why. That's good. That's, that's, good. that's why I show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's tomorrow morning. If you want to meet me outside at Tent Town, um, okay. I can take you to my family's farm. Well, we can swing by the clergy on the way there and tell them to come de necrotic the whole place. But we're going to need to tell Helga about it first. Oh, yeah. We should, I mean, yeah, yeah, we should. We should. We should. We should. We should. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could do that outside of character. We yeah, just, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do that on your way out. Okay. Hasrod, we got a sweater with your name on it, my oh, boy. Oh, Hasrod, we do them all. Mara already said something about free food. Yep, so that's, yep, sounds good. You're not she inviting actually... them to the free food, are you, Meryl? Meryl's like, no, no, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hasrod just looks like really disappointed. He goes, man, yeah, whatever. Kind of leans back. Man, whatever. Blow, like, if he had hair, he would blow it to the side. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meryl, Meryl leans forward and goes, don't tell him what's actually happening. Wink. Okay. Thanks. We'll make sure he puts on his sweater. Well, I don't think, I think he'll want to once he steps out the door. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I'll meet you at the, at the tent town, okay? Yes. Right next to the kiosk. I'll be right next to the guards where it's safe. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, good night, Helga. Good night. And that is where we will end the session tonight. That was a fun session. Oh my gosh, today. That was a lot of lore. Jesus. Yeah, it was a lot of lore oh, drop. Yeah, it was. Lore drop. Also, the the the, par the party is split. That has me worried a little bit. And I am starting. And I am stopping my recording. Well, I actually. Yeah, I actually, same here. I actually. We gotta... don't. We don't. We don't actually have Snake next week, so that's why we're. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I gotta get going here in about two minutes here, real fast, because I just got a call text from someone. I need to actually give someone a ride somewhere real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, stopping yeah. audio. No worries. Uh... 
I'm, I'm sorry, the prospect of Hasra in an ugly sweater is amazing. This is 50, isn't it? Yeah, this oh, is, oh, this is oh, no. What? Oh, no, no, no. Could not save project. Perhaps F music on special suit is not writable or the disc is full. Oh, shit. Okay, so you know, you, gotta, oh, you, gotta, you, you can leave the program. You're gonna have to delete something. You're gonna have to delete something off the file. I don't have anything on my C drive, though. I don't know what I can, can do off my can C you, drive. Can you try and save it to your F drive? That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. File. Yeah, file save as. Yeah, file I'm trying to save drive. this PC. Sorry. No worries, no worries. This is episode. Well, I'm saving it here. This is our 50th episode, by the way. Yeah, yes, that's what it I is. said. Okay, I got it. I got it. We're good. What I think. Uh oh. Oh no, it's not. Oh my god, why? Okay, leave the leave the program up. We can figure this yeah. out. We can figure this yeah, out. Alrighty, guys. Th I want to thank you so much. Uh, I, I want to thank you all so much for uh, everything. Thank you for the additional 1,000 bits. It's log, it's log, it's metal instead of wood. It's log, it's log. It's just so fucking good. And thank you so much. Kenneth Malone, thank you for the 300 bits. Demon Zero, thank you for the 100 bits. Sage Omni, Omni Geek, thank you for the 105 bits. And Jai Kaisen, thank you so much for the 200 bits. And Sir McCheese, thank you for the sub. Guys, and Black Bear, thank you for the additional 50 bits. Warlock 101 for the 5,500 bits. That one schmuck for the 1,000 bits. Oh my god. Dark Lord Popo, 500 bits. Dark Lord Popo, 400 bits. Reach one of Gmo, 100 bits. A lot of, lot of bits, a lot of bits. Thank you so much, guys. Full support. I do gotta get going here real quick. Uh, this is episode 50, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. This is episode goddamn mm -hmm. 50. And, I mean, what a trip this has been. Okay, I think I got it. Let me just give, sorry. <laughs> Tech issues. Just as we began, we end. Not really ending, but you know what I mean. Check, uh, Gamma Leo screaming in full caps, check for temp files to recover. I don't know, I'm gonna have my computer guy look at this. Well, don't close the program down, whatever you do. No, I'm not closing it down. I'm just, I'm deleting some, some audio files that I have on my music thing that I don't need. Mm. I'm just gonna get rid of them all. Well, we're already, uh, but, but we gotta plug everything real fast here. Snake, you're leaving us next week, but that's okay. Where can they find you though? Oh, they can find me on Twitter at Senile Snake. They can find me on Twitch at Distortion Devil. Such a good name. Such a strong name. Yeah. And from Goomba, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me here at Gaijin Goomba without an H. That is the joke. And everywhere else with an H. I just had a. Monster Hunter video drop last Tuesday, and I've got a nice E3 wrap up coming up uh, Saturday or Sunday. That's awesome. Ooh, Don Stick, thank you so much for the 1,000 bits. Good job, Monty. Thanks, everyone. That's great. Uh, Zito, where can they find you, man? They can find me at twitch.tv slash Zito. Uh, tomorrow's going to be art. Friday, I don't know what the fuck is happening because I'm just waiting on paychecks before I can decide what the fuck's going to happen. So probably indie game chicanery on Friday. Sounds good. And Monty, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at Monty Glue on, on Twitter, and you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue on Twitch. I'm kind of, I'm a little quiet right now just because I'm prepping for moving still. Yep. So. God, that, re that reminds me, I'm doing a special stream tomorrow for the freaking uh, Octo expansion, same time Ooh. at 7. Ooh, fun. Yeah. And you can find me on Twitter at TalkAuto101 and right here on this channel. Uh, tomorrow I'll be continuing on Fred Space. Fred Space! She'll be continuing as I try to survive. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, guys. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually got some good news. We have over 2,000 downloads a day now of the podcast for The Unexpectables. Woo! Ooh, oh, damn. It's like a, a big shout-out to our podcast guy, at Austin Eruption. You can find him on Twitter, at Austin Eruption. He used to be Boku no Eruption, but he changed that name because that was a bad idea. But guys, <laughs> I got to I gotta get going here. Thank you again, Kenneth Malone, for the five-month resub. And anything else you guys want to say before we head out? That was a good time. Uh, yeah, good time. Good. All right, guys. See you next week. Yeah, but who should we raid? Oh, I'm gonna find someone here real fast on Twitch, and we're gonna raid them. Da 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 da. Uh, we could go raid Octopimp. Yeah, yeah let's could. raid Octopimp. We could raid Octopimp. Oh, you want to go raid Octopimp, everybody? All right. Uh, sure. <laughs> we just. Oh. <laughs> I just, I'm just... Boy, he's gonna be in for a shock. 
Yo, a shock. Alrighty, guys. Eat him up. All right, thank you so much, guys, and we will see you next week at 7 o'clock PST, 10 o'clock EST on Wednesday. Bye. Later.